This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 639 Tuesday. We've been celebrating professionalized wrestling, and we're going to celebrate big time tonight. All of you guys out there in the Mayhem Nation in the uh, Facebook chat room already having a good time, and uh, we're going to keep the ball rolling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And with me, of course, is my compatriot from a state away from Poughkeepsie, New York. He is the only Mayhemmer with a future endeavored letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. 361 episodes away, SmackDown. We're fucking coming for you. That's right. That's We're right. We're coming, SmackDown. We're coming at you. Coming. We didn't start with The Rock, it, but you never know. As long as you stop airing for three years. It happens with podcasting. Can, it can happen with you. We can kind of catch up. <laughs> you can t- <laughs> sure. Well, sure. no, because even if, even if they stopped airing for three years, that's only like 200 episodes. We'd yeah, still be we could way work shy. It. Also with us uh, here in the studio... He's got toys. He is Toddy from. Oh. Hi, everybody. Toddy's here. Yeah, Goldberg had something to say. I have a truck that talks this week. What up? <laughs> what it, up? It's a Goldberg truck with Goldberg talking, but no Goldberg <laughs> yeah. visible in there. <laughs> 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 oh, it's all about the visuals this week. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. podcasters. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, no, hey, the, from the Thrifty Podcast, and he always has fun wrestling stuff. And mm-hmm. tonight is no different. Thank you for joining us once again. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here as usual. Awesome. And also with us, uh, we kind of had a surprise. Well, Tanya was kind of a surprise, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, but Not as a big, not as big. Not, not as, as big. big of surprise, but we do have also with us he is uh, joining us uh, from, geez, I don't know, I think West Virginia, is it? It's West Virginia. It's Sorg. West Virginia. He's been all over the chat rooms for a while now. You've been, I get you, bored. you've heard from him. You've been hanging out with him in the chat room, but Ty Cross is with us from System Elite, one of the flannel warriors himself, uh, healing I'm, up. I'm from, very happy to be here, with, be here with a dear friend like you. Wait, wow. who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> 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 I, I respect your hitting streak, sir. <laughs> thank you. Yes, but no, thank you for joining us. We've actually had you on zero podcasts so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we've been trying to plan me to come to Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. but I'm like just I'm just far enough away because it's like an hour and fifteen minutes to an hour and forty, depending. And, like, I'm just far enough away that it's hard for me to get up and drive to Pittsburgh to do a podcast, especially, like, on a weeknight or a Sunday when I got to wake up in the morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate, like, you letting me badger you long enough to do this with the phone. So <laughs> yeah. I, I do really appreciate Sorg, it. Sorg, I'm, I'm getting something from Podcast Central. We're actually – we've just been canceled. We, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, I can kill we, a territory. We, we have we have gone the way of Iron Fist. Uh, we may be available on the Disney streaming service. Oh, that's dude. what I've heard. <laughs> well, was Iron I, Fist not good? I never watched it. Yeah, it really not good? You're, you're not. Good. The season one was not good. Season two got a lot better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not enough to stay around, apparently. Uh, but that's another podcast. Go check out more information on that on the Comic Book Pit. We should really get you guys on that. Like, Mad Mike, you should definitely be on Comic I Book Pit. I would love to be on it, Sword. There I you thought go. that was an in-person thing. Uh, no, they've been doing remotes lately. Because we, okay. we have the power well, now. So 
Well, we'll have to put that out there. We'll have to put that out there because if anybody well, if you got the power, we got the touch. Get me on that too. Mm. I'll be on that too. Yeah, I yeah. Comic, there you go. I there you go. Books. Dan, Dan, a comic get me book on that pick. too. We got you some co-hosts. What are you guys Just doing give Sunday? Me, give me on the whole thing. <laughs> there you go. Whole thing. <laughs> whole thing. Oh, Toddy takeover over on comic book pitch. <laughs> Sorg so. out me in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not on it. <laughs> oh. I'm not on it. Well. We I just, did it. <laughs> that, that's good job. Good job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyways, thank you. this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We uh, got to do some business and we'll get to the actual topics. Um, <laughs> thank you, our friends. Uh, Basic Sickness at basicsickness.com for the intro music. Check us out at wrestlingmayhemshow.com where you can find links and subscribe to us in the podcast and video form. And look us up on your play- favorite platform. If we're missing on your favorite platform, let us know. No, we're not on Disney streaming yet. We just got the call, obviously. Mad Mike, you heard it. Um, but, uh, you know, let us know that. And if wherever you do find us, please rate and review us. That does help us get in front of more people and help this Mayhem Nation grow like it is tonight in the chat room with everybody hopping out there. You can drop us an email at that address. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. And please join us on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. And Paige, uh, the group is where we have a lot of great discussions throughout the week. And, of course, you can join us here every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook Live, like Ty Cross has been doing. And he got on the show because of it. Um, I don't know what I'm encouraging there. Now I'm kind of worried what I just opened up. Uh, but anyway, Everyone's welcome. <laughs> everyone's of welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome to join us in the, uh, 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 not only the Throw Facebook. Throw those W's up. Welcome, everybody. So there you go. Throw those W's up. Everybody's welcome here. I love your chat room work, by the way. When you like, like my chat room yeah, work? Yeah, yeah. When you were in here last time, you're like, throw the W's up. If throw you the feel W's welcome. up, baby. So throw the welcomes up in the, the W's in the chat room. Throw the W's feeling... in the chat if you feel welcome right now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, but no, you are welcome here uh, in the studio audience. Uh, if you don't, if you want to do more than just the Facebook, uh, please hit us up at the uh, Good Times at Wrestling and producer Missy will line you up with info to join us here live in person and uh, view the show be a physical part of the show that sounds weird uh you never know we do have a sorry, kendo, sorry. we do have a kendo stick sitting over there mm. so don't invite people to be a physical part of the show that that sounds off-putting yes i think that's against our policy uh also thank you to our patreon supporters <laughs> at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show including at the fan of the show dollar level longtime supporters such as bo diggity Woo! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby um, F. J. Town, mm. Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's <laughs> Foundation for Podcast Betterment. Our friends at the Pocky Club $5 level, where you will find the photo taking stylings via Facebook delay of one toddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do that. <laughs> so, Get, that some screen caps. Get, some Get some screen caps. Get some screen caps. There you go. Send, Send them to them yeah. at Thrifty Podcast on the Twitter. Yep. Um, but thank you to our friends over there at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley, uh, Doc Remedy, and our friend Dave Potter of the of the of the not the Thrifty, uh, the uh, oh Shutter Tiny Shutter starts with the T. Confused same thing. Me. Yeah, so, tiny same Shutter thing. Thrifty. Same basically thing. the same yeah. podcast just subscribe to them both listen share with your friends rate and review them while you're at it and our friend at the pizza club ten dollar level i know i saw him in the chat room here recently billy johnson joining us as well you can support the show help us keep the lights on here in the mayhem studio no the sorgatron media studio where mayhem happens at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show so i want to talk about the most interesting wrestling promotion happening right now mad mike lucha underground Impact Wrestling had Bound for Glory this past weekend, oh. and I thought you were going to say Rise. <laughs> I that's for a different show. So you had you had like the fifth most popular answer. You would not win on Family Feud. No, no, no. We, oh man, Wrestling Family Feud that would be fun. Uh, anyway, we've so, tried that Wrestling have, Game Show. Remember, we did. We did try that. Um, <laughs> we did try that, and maybe it's time time to try it again. Um, My yes. favorite game show. We have more technology now. Uh, Toddy, you watched it. Absolutely, I, watch. I, I watch wrestling. The show you do watch wrestling. Mm-hmm. The show <laughs> <laughs> and Bound for Glory is you know it used to be the WrestleMania yep. for Impact. Sure was. The venue does not look big. Weird. Yeah, it was odd. There was a, a yeah the the venue cap was quite low and I could be wrong in saying it but it looked uh, quite similar to where MLW tapes their weeklies mm-hmm. so I thought it was kind of interesting um, but the show itself was pretty passable. 
I mean, coming off the Slammiversary, which I enjoyed. And, and this that, was a full, like, pay, pay-per-view? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, they had the, the main event, uh, John Morrison, Johnny Impact versus Austin Aries. They had, uh, like, a, what they called a, a, a concrete match or something where they, they ripped up. The concrete jungle street fight. The or, concrete yeah. jungle street fight where they ripped up the mats and had the new LAX versus the old LAX. So it brought in, like, the old crowd coming back into it. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a pretty good show. Um, what they've been doing and they did like a, uh, also with Sue Young, if you're familiar with Sue Young, they did a whole thing where they went to like Sue Young's universe and Allie was there Mm -hmm. and there was vampires and coffins and stuff like that. Uh, So I actually saw a lot of that. Okay. I liked Um, it personally, mm -hmm. but it's just something because it's something different. So I always appreciated that. But I've got to be the only human on earth that if when uh, Bray Wyatt did that feud with Randy Orton where they did the uh, house, House of Horrors, I'm the only human alive that enjoyed that. I have to say. <laughs> I, so like, I liked it. I thought it was all right. I thought it was cool. It's, it's different. something to do. It's just something to do is how I it's figured. It's something different. Man. Yeah. I watched it in a bad environment because I watched it in sunny California in the middle of the day nah. at a Starbucks and I could literally could not see it on my phone with the brightness turned all the way up. Yeah. So, so that was it's my okay. I, I watched it at home. I couldn't see it, see it on my TV. Oh, okay. It was, it was a very darkened match. Yeah, like, it was. It was. Yeah. But Mad Mike, you said you don't like impact or what they're doing. Oh, or? there's a uh, long line here. Oh, yeah. uh, all right. Um, I give, I, I did my time in Azkaban. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, Fair I, enough. I, I, I watched a lot of impact. Um, so much so, I would talk about it on our official Twitter, sure. and they blocked me on my personal Twitter, uh, which is which I was believe a there, there. There are several men- members of the the Impact um, staff that has blocked him, I believe. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, I'm blocked by Hulk Hogan, which is lovely. Yeah, that's a I good mean, block. I towards them on no. the internet. I mean, I just called him a racist because he is. There but, you go, uh, baby. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Actually, I don't even think I said it. I don't even think I did. It'd I be an honor to be blocked by Hulk. Hogan. Only love, brother. H H. Yeah, yeah. Just replace the word brother with uh, what he wanted to say. Anyway, um, <laughs> wow, ninja. 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 Yes. 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 What what you gonna do, Ninja? Um, but yeah, I I've had a love hate relationship with Impact. Mm -hmm. Mostly loving to hate it. Now it's kind of just hating it. Did you see the show? No, I don't okay. no, no. Mike has um, not. I've been trying to convince Mike to check out like kind of this new iteration of Impact. Yeah. Um, because I think I think it has been getting a bit better. Um, but well, that's he, because he, it's half Lucha Underground. It is. It yeah. is. And I would Mike, rather just watch full Lucha Underground. Mike has been too hurt by them <laughs> in the past that that he can't he can't come back, and, and it's okay. He's mm-hmm. on the and, other. And it's he's, and it's still the same commentary. It's still Josh Matthews on commentary. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, well, well, and Don Callis. And Don Callis. Don Callis brings it up. Yeah. Yeah, it's still Josh. If if they change Josh Matthews on commentary, I'll watch it again. Once again, I, I he's been damaged so much by heel Josh Matthews that he can't he can't nope. work it. He yeah. can't do but, it. Yeah, but anyways, that's weird when, when somebody doesn't play a heel their entire career like that. It was the same thing with Cole. Like, yep, I almost com- stopped watching like, Raw. Trying to push a heel commentator that doesn't come across like a good heel is it is tough to swallow sometimes. A a you can have a heel commentator. He just yeah, cannot, but not somebody who he just is cannot a be your baby face. Commentator. Well, he is yeah. his face. Yeah, because then he's yeah, trying to bring the product. Yeah. Don Callis is the heel. Josh Matthews is the face. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, but I think they play a lot better. The the sores are still too fresh. Yes. Yeah. But anyways, by the way, now people are calling out their blocks on the chat room. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I had, uh, Jack in the chat room saying that he caught a uh, Flip Gordon block, and Ryan's asking if he called him out for the flatter stuff. Uh, yeah, that'll probably do it. Um, we still don't know why Riz has been blocked by uh, by uh, like Xavier, Xavier Woods. Woods. Like yeah. that, that, that perplexes. And then he did that whole thing saying how yeah, if I blocked you, it's probably for a reason. Um, on table for three. So sorry, Riz. Um, but I've never been blocked on Twitter because I'm not that active. <laughs> I don't think I have. Well, okay, not that reason, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, you got to at least get blocked by one person in wrestling. I I'll mean, try. Maybe I'll go out and try. I, I really tried once with uh, Dean Kane. I started um, oh, trying, why to would you, I why? tried to work an angle with Dean Kane, but he wouldn't respond to me. He probably didn't know who I was. <laughs> why do you want to get blocked by Superman? <laughs> no, because I was just doing this thing. I was like where I was trying to like start to go a little crazy. And my idea of going crazy was start challenging people that I felt were threatening me, even though he doesn't know who I am. 
And the idea that Dean came, I like almost like a Charles Manson thinking the Beatles are talking to him from Liverpool. Like the whole idea was um, Dean Kane is somehow threatening to me, even though we've never actually met. And I called him out and challenged him to a fight and he didn't respond. He didn't block me either. So I'm, I mean, I just you, saw it. you don't tug on Superman's cape. Yeah, I tried. Nothing <laughs> happened. When, when, when people you add, can and get away with it. When people, oh, okay. Well, good to know. When people I'll add let, thrifty I'll podcast, get, like, I will fight anybody who at at thrifty podcast. If somebody calls me on a fight, I will fight anybody that adds thrifty <laughs> podcast. I'll be in. Maybe that's why I did it. I knew he wouldn't show up. I'll, I'll let Dean Cain know he's my fourth favorite favorite Superman. Here's my favorite I wanted thing. to get Scott Peterson Dean Cain because that's like my favorite Dean Cain when he's got like blonde hair and a weird goatee. <laughs> oh, we are so down rat holes. Producer Missy, <laughs> bring us around. Wait, I was, what? I was, what did he say? I was going to make a <laughs> you comment say, this about this is what happens Sorg. when we talk about impact, Sorg. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, producer now, Missy. Let's talk about how much Austin Aries is a dick. Producer let's Missy. Talk about that. <laughs> my favorite block was the fact that uh, Colt Cabana had bl- blocked Sorg. And it took Dutters talking to Colt Cabana. Oh, that's right. To realize how well, awesome well, and cool well, we were. No, to no, unblock Block us. Indie Wrestling. Also, I want to call out Kobe Red right now at oh. IWC for blocking <laughs> Indie oh. Wrestling. I mean, I don't know if he's out there. I meant to say something to him in person, but fuck it, we're doing on the podcast. I'm calling out him for blocking us. Uh, well, I'll see you at was IWC, it, sir. Was it like him being tagged and a bunch of stuff? It probably it was. is. We do that a lot. <laughs> and it's it, a, it yeah, is you, a lot. But we use it as a promotional tool for you guys, though. Yes, yes. Like, that's our big thing. We're like, hey, we're trying to give you something to share. So, Ty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> Austin Aries is apparently an asshole. Yeah. Uh, you saw it, Toddy. What went down? Um. So, I actually had some friends in attendance there, too. Oh, really? Yeah. I'd, where was where what was, it was the venue? In, it was uh, it was, it was in New York. York. It was in New York. In New York. I don't, I don't okay. remember the name of the, but I have a lot not of, New York City though. No, New York City. New oh, York okay. City. Yeah, okay. and uh, yeah, I have like a lot of friends that like hang out in that area and are in that scene up there. Okay. And uh, apparently, so John Morrison, Johnny Impact went one on one with Austin Aries for the title. Uh, Austin Aries worked the match correctly, but when John Morrison, Johnny Impact did his finish. Aries, after he took the three count, merely stood right up and went to the back of the locker room and then gave the finger. Mm-hmm. And um, no selling of the move just popped right up. He well, he <laughs> sold. Yeah, yeah. He, he like sold everything throughout the match. But as soon as the three count hit, he just got up and left, like got out of dodge. And a friend of mine that was in attendance said that they thought it was a work at first, but he actually saw a killer cross. um talking to the ref asking where Austin Aries went so if it was like a work there would they why would they have that conversation because that because mm. Killer Cross and Moose are in Austin Aries posse so like they didn't even know okay um so if it was a work Austin Aries the only one that knows it and then I guess he's gone um I guess he's gone from impact so it proves that mm-hmm. it, it was a shoot um good riddance yeah, I don't know. I think we were talking a little bit about that before the show started. Is if you look back in those early early two thousands to mid two thousands ROH, you see a lot of cats in there. You see Samoa Joe, you see AJ Styles, you see Nigel McGuinness, Daniel Bryan, and you see Austin Aries. And at the time, he was he was really good, and mm-hmm. uh, all those all those cats kind of started to rise together. And people are always like, "Well, why didn't Austin Aries make it as far?" Well, I guess you can't you can't work with him. I guess he's mm. just a jerk. So you know, sometimes jerks don't make it far. Uh, I went Not that he didn't. I mean, he has an exceptional career, but I'm just more so mean like to the level of those other guys. I want to go to the 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 professional in the room here, uh, Ty. How bad is this? Honestly, I don't know if it's not a work. Um, I tend to lean towards you get kind of jaded on things like that when you've seen it a lot. Um, a lot of work shoots. Um, it, it, work shoots like that. WCW used to do that kind of stuff because they're kind of like a like a hey, get people talking sort of thing. Yeah. Um. So like, obviously, I wasn't in attendance, and I actually I didn't watch it live. I just watched the clip of he almost like almost did a kip up, like he just rolled to his back, popped up. I guess he flipped off Callus and then flipped off the crowd yeah, and walked yeah, yeah. back. But like, I mean, I'm not sold that it's not a work just because so many things in wrestling are, you know what I mean? Like even when I was first breaking in and the pipe bomb thing happened, you know, that was the first time in the business that I was ever like, Oh, was that a work sort of thing? And it was, and it 
kind of always tends to be. But I, I also lean on the positive of like, I don't want him to be a bad person mm -hmm. in my head. I'm like, I just kind of want him to be a cool dude. And like, they're just, mm -hmm. this is a work or maybe this is a way for him to step away for a while because his contract is coming up and get some buzz for him on the way out the door and some buzz for impact, um, you know, for the door to kind of be open for him to come back. So I don't know. I don't necessarily know if it you think that's work. the story they're trying to tell towards it being one. Like, is that well, the that... story you think they're trying to tell like the outsider type story? Because it doesn't really do much for Johnny impact because he just won clean and then he no sold his finisher. So the champ yeah, is still but that's there. That's the kind of like pulling the curtain back thing. that yeah. People always seem to think works. And it, I don't think it does. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's a tough position for me to be in because if I really cared more, I'm not super, I don't really follow impact, yeah, but I'm like, if I really cared, it would be tough because I don't like work shoots that much, but I also don't like people being jerks. So mm -hmm. it's, it's tough either way. Mark man made a good point of like, it, it, you know, it's not a good look if it is a work shoot and it's not a good look if like, you know, it, it was a shoot, yeah. but I, I, I'm not going to say something. I think something was a shoot. Um, well, here's here's right something. away because it's hard for me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Producer Missy, here's something interesting. I just tried to find the video clip in order to like share it, and like ten different YouTube videos that had the clip are no longer available. Oh no, that's... so they've done they've done oh, no, some YouTube immediate is down. Yeah, no, no, no. no. They uh, no, in, they've done some immediate cleanup. In, no, no. And Impact Wrestling is uh, we other previous owner were very big on um, takedowns. Like that's been a, it's, we we do not show TNA Impact Wrestling clips because we usually get this show blocked on YouTube. So there was a lot of fan footage on Twitter. Well, and I like, found that was the thing I saw was the fan video on Twitter. I yeah. think Missy is saying from the company standpoint, they seem to be yeah yeah, yeah like they're, they're like keeping that part of it out, like yeah. not trying not to let that video. Yeah. Yes, that's that's like, the thing you've That's where I was going with it. Yeah. Now yeah. I did find an article that was talking about it that I have shared a link to the article and the video is embedded into that article so if there's anybody out there who hasn't seen it you, you can see it there okay. mm -hmm. but um yeah no i'm wondering if it's more of a work and they're trying to turn it the way that they want to turn it mm -hmm. under mm -hmm. the circumstances Here, like, here's a question too um i didn't watch it live like on pay-per-view or watch the the actual video of it other than like fan shot stuff where was the camera when he no sells the move and starts flipping people uh, off hard they kind of hard cam, cam, hard cam. regular regular so you cam. see it yeah. Um, yeah, you see it, but you see it in the background of it. Cause again, he didn't know sell the move. He, after the three count, right, he got right. up and walked out and hard cam. You actually see him give the finger back, <coughs> back, back to the camera. He's walking back to gorilla and you see him give the finger on his way out. So it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it was center. It was frame center, but it, it, it was in the background. It wasn't the intended shot. Well, and the video that and I don't I'm, know who their producer is because the only producer I know is either is Kevin Dunn and Sorg, but like, so I don't know who their producer is. So I don't know if he's uh, if he's unaware, like, to not think, catch that sort of thing. I think is Kevin Sullivan working for, not 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 wrestler Kevin Sullivan, but old old producer Kevin Kevin Sullivan. I think is working with them. That's unconfirmed. Well, the video that I'm but, that I was looking at, yeah. I just actually you guys are talking about. It, I literally went back to watch it from the standpoint mm. and it shows there's a camera right there when it happens the camera pans up to him as he's doing what he's doing in the ring and as yeah. he's walking out and when he left the ring is when the camera that was on him at ringside turned back to the ring. that's how long it part, took yeah. for them to, de to determine like this is not part of this yeah you know and and you know however they do i don't know if they do it like wwe where there's like a producer on the headset or something along with that, like agents or something like that. But um, well, the build to the match was kind of in that way. It was like kind of a work shoot feeling, and in fact, it it, it felt more so like a work leading up, and mm -hmm. because there was like press conferences, yada yada yada. And they've been doing that a bit lately, right? 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 So there wasn't really any telltale signs that it it was. And then, yeah, I guess he just walked out. But I I don't know it, it, if your crew doesn't know that you're about to do it, probably is a shoot. Mm -hmm. You know. But they well, they have some other stuff. Ethan Page re debuted there under uh -huh. Ethan Page, so Good. he's he's working there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it whether it's a work or a shoot, it's still not a good look. No, no, no. 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 Like this is your WrestleMania. What would happen like this past WrestleMania if when Brock hit that last F five, you know, he celebrated, and Roman just got up. 
walked around, walked up the ramp, and gave the finger to Vince. Yeah, I think we need. We'd to all s- be having this conversation. We'd all tune into Raw. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, think, I don't think. Because Roman think we would. doing that, Roman doing that to Vince and Brock is a huge deal. Yeah. <laughs> so we all be like, but, th- what but this was is their that? WrestleMania. This is their WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Like, why do they keep? And this is something that's infamous in Impact. They keep putting guys who are on the way out in the in the main events of their biggest shows. Well, here's here's the question that I'm going to bring into light on that. Yeah. Didn't we have a similar blow off situation like that with Goldberg and Lesnar? It wasn't it WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, think, I mean, this is a different situation, but sure. kind of a similar thing on that large stage. Yeah, I think both. Yeah, uh, but that wasn't the main event. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Uh, but, but, but it was everybody it was still knew they were in. going though. Everybody knew yeah. they were going. Yeah. They didn't think yeah, Austin and it, and it ended going. with it ended with Austin being victorious. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he's Stone he's Cold done Steve both Austin. of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's he's done both of them. So that was a situation where. They knew what was coming, and they were able to nip it in the bud at the same they time. They had a backup plan. At least, at least they tried. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's successful. I wouldn't say. Oh, no, yeah, I was in that crowd. It was not successful. No, 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 no. All right, well, we'll see what happens with the impact. Uh, well, okay, wait, well, let's touch base real, real quick. Uh, uh, what else of value happened there? Like I said, there was that kind of boards match and things like that. It, it, mm-hmm. From the clips I've been seeing, it looks like it was a pretty fun show. Yeah, um, they did... Uh, um yeah like i said they re-debuted ethan page because the first time he was on the roster he was like uh uh, chandler park um i think they called him Mm. the the first time there so they they debuted him as ethan page proper um brian cage seems to be going up the ranks um they have yeah they have ethan page with matt seidel now and matt seidel is doing a gimmick where he speaks from his third eye so he has like a touches his forehead a lot and they did a short piece with josh matthews and matt seidel as a tag like we're talking months ago but it's already retconned mm-hmm. already retconned it was it's already done but yeah that's what that so that's when yeah josh matthews has hasn't been a heel on that show for for months and uh um of note you know that they're, they're using a lot of lucha underground guys there um they're kind of developing their own thing and the mm-hmm. big thing right there is that's like OVE, that's their show. And Sammy and the Chris brothers, they, they kind of own that show, is the whole point of that program now. Um, always feels weird to see Sammy, but yeah, he's doing his thing. So he's probably how, up the ladder. Pentagon's up the ladder, you know. How much was Bound for Glory? Oh, I don't know. I didn't I didn't oh, pay okay. for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw it. I didn't know. I, because... No, I saw it at a because friend's. I didn't pay for it. Oh, okay, okay. You didn't steal yeah, it. I didn't pay for yeah. it. I saw it at a friend's. I didn't All right, steal but it. E- even if it costs like 35, 40 bucks, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. seems like way too well, much. Well, this is, and this well, is, they have a thing. Ring 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 they have a network now. Is it on, the, was it on the network? I believe, yeah. Well, that'd be good. Yeah. It is uh, going for, if you go on uh, the Fight TV app, which is also carrying uh, Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh, by the way, uh, thirty nine ninety nine for yeah, Bound that's for way Glory. Too much. That's um, a lot. Now, if you look uh, the, and I think the Ring of Honor pay per views, well, let's see, how much was all in? How much was all in? How much would you pay? Mad Mike, what would you pay for all in? I did pay for all in. In oh. retrospect? Or? What did you pay yeah. for all in? I, but all in is different. Yes, it is. All in was put on by three dudes who just ponied up their cash. Right, 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 right. I will happily pay for that. It How was, much it was, was it? It was punk rock. It was thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah, um, I'm trying to say, and I'm presuming. Yeah, right, all right. in, all in is a completely different story. TNA, if they're as as better off financially as they seem like they are, they should not be charging forty bucks for a pay per view in 2018. By cons- by by co- comparison, the upcoming uh, NWA 70th anniversary show, uh, it's coming up in four days. By the way, is twenty four. Excuse me, twenty four ninety nine. Um, See, that's more reasonable. But it, it is, nice and it's also, and it's also something. What's that? I said that's a nice price for a pay per view for it like, is. for something that isn't. You know what I mean? We're WWE, way more accessible on TV. It's easier to find. Right. It's more global. Something like you know an NWA pay per view like that. You know, twenty five bucks is nice. Yeah, wrestle for the, someone to check out. Like, hey, this is the seventieth seventieth anniversary of this 
company, I'd shell out 25 bucks for that. Yeah, and they yeah, also and, did... And, you know, from a fan's perspective. They also did with, um, with, with the Impact Show Bound for Glory, they had James Ellsworth as a mystery opponent for Eli Drake, and that was originally slated to be Joey Janela, hmm. the bad boy. So the bad boy was take one, you know, with the unfortunate injury of the bad boy. Um, they brought in Ellsworth. So Ellsworth seems to be in good shape. Um, they worked a short piece. You know, I don't know if I think the, the crowd wanted Jericho. But, yeah, on book, it was going to be the bad boy, and that was going to be his debut. But okay. he's going to be out for a long time, unfortunately. Mm, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so, and by also comparison, Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh is at only nine ninety nine over. See, there we yeah, go. That's there the right you price go. That sounds like the and right. You, now, that's that's a fantastic price for something like that. I got to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, it was a crazy. So, who was on that Lucha Fiesta show? Not Ty Cross. Oh, <laughs> well, sorry. sorry. <laughs> That's all I can think of. Uh, no, you know, I was setting you up for a plug. Oh, sorry. Ultimo Dragon. I'll flip my plugs in. Ultimo Dragon. Sam Adonis, the most controversial man in professional wrestling these days, as well as Caristico, the original Mystico and the original Sin Cara, uh, and so many more. And a lot of our friends from the International Wrestling Cartel featured. The Beast Man also featured yeah, the there. Yeah, the original Beast Man. And the original Beast Man. Wait, is there an unoriginal Beast Man? He's the only one, so <laughs> that works for me. That works level. for me. All right, that works for me. Absolutely. Then you can go check that out. It's over on Fight the Fight app over there. Nine ninety nine Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh. It literally took place across the street from where I'm sitting right now. So go. So you check didn't out. have to pay for a ticket. You can just look out your window. Well, I, I we filmed it, so I mean. No, we didn't pay because we were filming. You didn't pay for a ticket anyway, then. But but so well, no, they, you couldn't see much of anything because of all the tents and everything. So, um, but you, you could see it, a huge crowd. But you could see the crowd. You could see. Uh, you could definitely see it in the few moments as you're on the T going by. My favorite thing from it is the the hard cam. You do see the train go by in the background. Uh, That's so cool. it's it, it's a pretty cool vibe over there. And a really fun event, and uh, and I think worthwhile, and hopefully showcasing a lot of this talent from around here. And brought some really awesome talent into the area. Bull James, awesome to meet Bill, Bull James. Um, you know the old uh, uh, Bull Dempsey from uh, NXT. Taz? Taz coach, I think Taz coached him. Oh yeah, yeah Taz. That's a Taz kid. Okay, yeah. All right, he's cool. He's mm-hmm. cool. We're trying to figure out if that's his hat that that was left here. Is he with Shawn Michaels, the Malibu Owls over there? Oh, I, I don't know. Somebody left the hat here. Yeah. So uh, we, we kind of used the studio as a locker room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that was interesting. Um, but anyways, go check that out. Support Lucha Wrestling. And uh, hopefully we'll get that back here in the area as well uh, once again. So real cool. Real, real cool. So I wanted to talk about. Um, wait, I, wait, wait, a, wait a minute before you jump into this. Because I've been sitting here and I've noticed Toddy brought some friends with him today. This is this, this is me. I don't. Oh, you mean oh, yeah, these yeah. friends? Oh, look yes. At that. Oh, thank you, Toddy, Missy. I want to hear a little bit about your friends, buddy. Toddy never, never comes thank empty, you, empty-handed. Missy. Thank you, some, Missy. He's got always got something to show off here or makes noise, as we found out at the beginning of the show. All right, folks. So we're gonna run it down. Yeah, I host a show, Thrifty Podcast, Thrifty ThriftyPodcast dot com. Subscribe on iTunes. And what I do each week is I uh, bring out some friends thrifting with me. We gather a thrift hall. We drag it back to the studio and record an episode all about it. So as uh, all the time that I'm on Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, whatever I find the previous couple of weeks um, in the thrifting world, I bring on. um, This is actually an older piece, but this is from 1999. This is a Goldberg truck here from WCW. And uh, it's a talking truck, which is phenomenal. But it's about, I'd say, about 8 to 10 inches long here. It's a red truck um, for the people who aren't looking at the video of it, but the audio. And it originally did come with a Goldberg figure. Unfortunately, I didn't find it in the, the mixture there. But this series with these trucks here, that's when, um, like, the late 90s were a time where, like, cars were... They were trying to get cars cool again. <laughs> so there's a DDP one of these. There's a Hollywood Hogan one of these. There's a giant one of these. And the Goldberg one. Um, so this is my Goldberg truck, and it looks like for the guys on audio, it's like a it's like a low rider pickup truck kind of thing. Yeah, so, it's a low rider. Yep. Yeah. With the, the, so can we can we recreate 
the infamous Hulk Hogan versus giant monster truck pull. You could do whatever you want. Yeah, there we can go. do that. We can use your imagination, man, Mike. Isn't the, why isn't the gold? Why is the Goldberg truck red? Mm. Uh, well, because the, the Hollywood Hogan truck was black and white, so they had a oh, red yeah, one. Okay. Yeah, because what did Kevin Nash not have a truck? Um, not in this series. He did have a later one oh, that, that, may, okay. that was black and red. But yeah, I, I guess red was still on the table because Hogan wasn't using it at the time. Now, here's yeah. a very important question yeah. from the chat room. Alex yes. Miller wants to know that can the truck do a spear? Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the truck can do a spear. We could actually uh, set something up here um, uh, and segue over into these other guys. Um, oh, no, we, we have... Yeah, we could use these guys. Um, what I have here, since it's closer to Halloween, for all you folks watching the video, this would be more for you. But if not, I'll describe it. Um, what I have in both of my hands, I'll get a tight shot of me here so I can take a picture of that later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot. And um, if you're questioning that, listen to gold. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, what I have here are two uh, action figures. They're WWF Jax action figures. I'm sure the gentleman so on the stream knows. Looks, looks late 90s. Late probably. 90s, 98, 99. And what we have are Legion of Doom member, member Animal and Stone Cold Steve Austin. And at the thrift store, these were found Frankensteined. Now, Animal's head is on Stone Cold Steve Austin's body. Um, along with that, his arms are painted red. His legs are painted red. So it's Austin's body. Paint it all up with Animal's head. Over here, we got Stone Cold Steve Austin on Legion of Doom Animal's tights. And he kind of looks like a from the Matrix because they took a black Sharpie to his upper body and they colored that in. So he's wearing a black long sleeve shirt, black uh, tights, and then he has Edge's vest on. So <laughs> Wait, you know, That is Edge's vest. That's Edge's vest. And huh. it says it right there. And what disappointed me most about this is I didn't notice that was Edge's vest. So when I left the Goodwill outlet, I was like, oh, that means Edge was probably there. Um, I did find pieces of Takamichi Noku, um, just the upper torso, which I did not bring. Um, but uh, the, the question for Alex Miller in the chat, yeah, buddy, they could do a spear. Um, we could just, uh, you know, hit the button here and speared right through them. One more time for everybody in the back who didn't see it. Got two wrestlers, got a truck, and it's just going to spear right through them. That was for you, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> real, real quick, can I just chime in for one second? Absolutely. Go for it. Yeah. I'm very impressed that you could see the torso of an action figure and know that it's talking that you know. Too. Yeah, I'm a weirdo. They, Let's they be honest. They didn't make many Asian action figures yeah it's a it's a bit of the a, a different you know darker um skin complexion but yeah it's definitely taka and i definitely know it's taka <laughs> and and you're right to call me out on it for sure for sure no no no. it's not a bad thing yeah. i'm just impressed by it i couldn't look at like I, I couldn't look at an action figure's torso and know which action figure that was and i had action figures too but yeah i'm insane ty a... do you even know who you're wrestling in the ring half the time uh, no, I just run at people and try to hit them with my elbow or my shoulder. See, case in point. I think this could be a good segue. Ty, what are, who are you, some of your favorite opponents, do you think? Um, I was going to, I was trying to think of something stupid to say, but a uh, <laughs> real answer, <laughs> I was trying to think of a dumb joke, but yeah. I always had fun wrestling Tony Johnson. Cool. Um, just because like he can do so many things that it makes me be creative. Like, oh, what if you did this out of this move? And mm -hmm. it, it lets me flex my creativity with someone who can literally do anything. Yeah. Um, and then I used to have, we used to have a lot of fun wrestling the fantastic ones. It would be Edric and myself versus Peyton Graham and Jack Pollock. Yeah. And those are some of my favorite, that might be my favorite story that we ever got to tell was the build up to wrestling the fantastic ones. And then we did fans bringing the weapons, which was my favorite match I ever had. And then we did the Black Hand Society together, and that whole story we got to tell was really That's fun. where I know you from. Okay, that oh, makes yeah. sense. I think we saw WrestleMania together like five years ago at Peyton Graham's house. <laughs> like five years ago, uh, six. Maybe, yeah. maybe. I don't, I don't usually go to Peyton Graham's place. I don't either. I mean, that was five years ago, but I was there that night, and you may or may not have been there. I may or may not have been. <laughs> it also might have been my tag partner, Edric. 
Mm, could be. Could have been that too. People can conf- people confuse us, which I don't know why, because we don't. I don't think we look alike. Yeah. So we, we actually started tagging. We're, I don't want to get too deep into my story because that's a different podcast. That's a different podcast. So yeah, we'll, we'll get that lined you'll up. You'll have. Yeah. But Wait, one, is he trying to invite himself quick, onto when, another podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, it's going to be an awesome I, cast. The only reason I'm letting this go on is because I don't know, I don't know who this fucking guy is. <laughs> <laughs> you swear so much, man. Yeah, this, hey, episode, hey. this podcast is allowed. That is part of my charm. That's right. I can't He's mad. That's I'm his whole thing. Worried. He's mad. I'm always worried that my parents will listen to me on a podcast, so I don't ever do it. Luckily, my, par- <laughs> my parents don't know what a podcast is. So. I did have a promoter that's, tell that's me, fair. your show is really great. I just wish you didn't sh- swear so much. I was like, well. See, that's why, like, the Ty Cross, just Ty Cross episode, I mean, you're going to be able to put that anywhere, Sorg, because Clean I'm mouth. not going to swear that much. Yeah, it's good not, boy. Sorg, it's not bad. You're a good Sorg, boy. We, we can post one episode without the explicit tag. That's right. Exactly. Well, you know, Indie Mayhem Show, I do have the F word in the music just to make it all explicit. Oh, that's hilarious. Ah. Well, we can, we can bleep it that one episode. Half people don't notice it, so. You know, I have to ask this question. Yes. Ty. Ty. Are you going to be involved in that really cool thing with the other wrestlers and the stuff and the scary things? What is it? <laughs> I'm going to say no, probably. Well, no, is it that thing that Brandon K posted about? I think so. We're, we're going to talk uh, about it. If it is, we're going to um, talk about it a little really bit later. I didn't get a chance to read it, so oh. <laughs> I was probably going to read it and then say, Sick. "All right, we'll, we'll segue <laughs> that later." Uh, anyway, not, not that I ignore Brandon K's post or whatever, but usually oh, when I'm dude. at work and I see, I see like I see that. Not that I'm super busy, but I'll see that and be like, "Oh, I'll let people comment and, and you know." Let it fill up. I don't want to be the first person to dive onto something like that because I never know what I'm doing day to day. Yeah, no, you're fine. <laughs> it drives Mark Man crazy because he's always like, hey, are you free for this? Dave? Well, one thing I'll that say, you... I don't know. I have to see. One thing that you did miss out on that we had a whole lot of fun with, mm-hmm. we had some wrestlers at the Scare House. Uh, we did this past weekend. Uh, we, we had a lot of fun with it. It's uh, PB Smooth's birthday uh, uh, the, the couple of days. And now he hates me because I made them sing to him at Eaton Park. So now I know what it's like to have a seven foot tall man angry at me, uh, like probably legitimately. Uh, no, we we had a lot of fun uh, out there. We had uh, probably about ten guys out there and gals out there, including uh, Badger and Jinx and uh, Katie Arquette and uh, Duke Davis. Uh, Sorry, did you have Beastman at Scarehouse? Beastman was not at Scarehouse. Chris, can, can we? Can I petition for Halloween? I don't to get a zombie beast man at Scarehouse. Uh it might happen at another event, I think, maybe soon actually. Um I'm, okay. not, I'm not sure right. if he's involved with it yet, but uh the, the, the so 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 we we got we got wrestlers out there. Um if you go look on indie wrestling US is um well, all of our social media, we posted at least two videos already of many of them encountering the clown and the bunny from Scarehouse. So yeah, I, I saw some of those. Is, I like anything with Larusso. Yes, reacting to things because Larusso reacting to things is funny. To he me. picked me up in a uh, from a mega bus one time. Chris, <laughs> Chris Larusso. Yeah, he he uh, picked me up. I, I got dropped off in the middle of the night, um, off a mega bus in Pittsburgh, and I I never met him before. And then uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> through somebody else, I was just like, I need a ride home. And all of a sudden, this guy Chris Larusso comes and picks me up. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm discovering more and more of your local wrestling connections as we go here, and it's a nice guy. Uh, came to being killed, man. Very nice guy. Uh, very very nice. Uh, very nice guy. Um, we we've talked other times, but yeah, I have some connections to some local wrestlers that I forget that I do, and some of them are weird connections. You never know how I'm connected to things. Well, that's, that's the thing. Weird. Like Sorg's mind, like I just saw his face, and you just blew his mind. Yeah, just like, and that's just something that doesn't happen. Also, frequently. amazing for you just dropping a podcast. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he like picked me up one time in the middle of the night from a mega bus stop. Never met him before in my life. You. you- Almost got killed, and you don't even know it. Did he super kick you when he met you? <laughs> no, he was kind of nice. Okay, kind of nice. He was talking about uh, wrestling school. Okay, um, he was nursing an injury at the time, if I remember. This was like a year or so ago. Okay, he uh, at the time he freshly got a haircut. Okay, because he had formerly long hair. Mm-hmm. See mm-hmm. all this stuff I know. I'm an encyclopedia. Wow. <laughs> Fun fact about Larusso. Um, I specifically told him not to cut his hair when he first started growing it out, and. Uh, he didn't cut his hair for a long time, so I like him. You're welcome. Oh, that's He's on nice. You. You're welcome, that's on you. Everybody. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah, I help. <laughs> I help a lot of people in wrestling. Sword. <laughs> I came up with. I came up with the Bearcat. I came up with the Metahuman. 
I came up with Teapot's finish, the splash, calling it the hot mess. That actually might have been Jay Flash, but I came. Are up with you the responsible idea for his ass hanging out every other match? No, that was, uh, I believe, of his own creation. Okay, I think it was supported by Jock Sampson, but can, can it's I tell a license you, to print money, though. Can I tell you how much I absolutely love the MetaHuman's response at the Scarehouse? Like, that was my favorite part of the videos. Peanut butter! Peanut butter By is the way, not a safe word. That's what I learned this week in wrestling, that peanut butter is not a safe word, no matter how many times you yell so it. we're not to that segment yet. Oh, we're not to that segment. But anyways, uh, no, we had a lot of fun with that. There's a lot of stuff coming up, including um, at least two wrestling events here in the area. Uh, we're going to be talking with the uh, Latin Assassin about the one right here in Beachview. And uh, there's one with the Rise Wrestling happening uh, downtown in uh, in uh, Market Square. And I think I think everybody's going to be zombified is the word. Are you just moving the segments? I thought we were doing the segment now. I, I thought that's what we just went into. New host. I can Where's be the All right. <laughs> Toddy, Toddy, understand. <laughs> Missy, I, throw it to me. Toddy, understand the Undertaker did stuff. Yeah, the Undertaker did stuff. Um, he cut a very rare um, a shoot uh, promo, as you call it. And he also choke slammed it the was- dude. It was. I think it was like less shoot than just out of character. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Like more of a like a like a shoot talk, like a out of mm-hmm. character, a rare out of character interview from the Undertaker that involved a choke slam, and that's when we brought up. I was trying to remember the studio host that Hulk Hogan gave a sleeper to death. Maybe one of you gentlemen remember. Do you remember Hulk Hogan? Wait, it didn't actually kill him. It just it was a bad Wait, scene. Hulk right? Hogan giving a sleeper to someone. It was either, it was in the late eighties or early nineties. Oh wait, Regis. No, 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 no. It wasn't Regis? Regis? No, no, it wasn't Regis. No, it's Hulk Hogan. He puts a sleeper hold on a very, like, built like me, a very scrawny looking fella. And he puts a sleeper hold on him to show, like, you know, it, it was supposed to be kayfabe. Like, yeah, wrestling's real. And he was actually choking the guy. And then when he released the sleeper, the guy's head slammed off the ground and the blood was starting to puddle and then they cut away from it but it was like in the early 90s i actually do remember that oh i have it i have it i found the video and it was during this the steroid scandal and that's Mm. why he was on tv talking about the steroid scandal so then he did a big goof and choked a guy out by accident (coughs) it was richard belzer richard belzer that's it richard belzer thank you producer missy great great on the fact check (laughs) (laughs) yes I was oh. going to say, it definitely, it definitely wasn't Regis, because Regis loved having wrestling holds put on him. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what's an awesome Regis interview is uh, Diesel, when he's the champion, and he comes out in a suit. Really? Really? That's just an awesome interview. Yeah, because it's it's so weird looking uh, to see Diesel in a, like a full-on suit, but um, it's just a cool interview because he's completely out of character, Wait and he's just a like a, being a dude. So, so Richard Belzer is the guy from Law & Order. Yeah, brother. What? Killed him. What? Killed him out. Knocked him out. Yeah. He he slumps on the ground like a bag of wet noodles. Oh, they must have taken them all down because none, none of them are loading right on, on YouTube right now. I think YouTube I'm wondering if down. YouTube's down. Oh, is YouTube down? YouTube. Yeah, well, it's YouTube a good thing down. we moved to Facebook. YouTube.com, the website, is down. That is okay. uh, official. All right. There's that. Well, that's that's why, the end of the oh, world, isn't that's it? That's right. I was trying to this pull up some videos time. for this promo, and it didn't work out yeah. well. So... Um, but no, and it, it, it is, I don't know if it's like, is it because it's, it, you know, because I, when I kept hearing about it, I thought he gave the interview in Australia mm. in, in conjunction with this event, sure. but this had nothing to do with that. No, it and was it, just it, a rare, and, and out of character. Like, and it sounds like this guy was really big on, I, I didn't see any of the rest of his interviews, but from the tone that he was saying, he, he seems like one of these guys that talks about like success and, and business and da, 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 right? Yeah. He has a way of kind of getting it out of folks, but yeah. even for Taker, you never see Mark much. You know? Yeah. Right. But, but it was just like Taker was, I mean, he looks like Biker Taker, which is yep. <laughs> how he dresses yep. to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, it, it, and that was, that was really cool just to see like just Undertaker, as a person chilling and being a dude yeah you know and like super unannounced too like i was just scrolling through my suggested youtube videos and it was there and i was like wait a second what is this and i texted uh edrick and mark man and they both i think already saw it because i'm always behind on things but it just like it wasn't super talked about it wasn't really put out there that i saw at least like i just i stumbled upon it Mm mm-hmm yeah, you would think something like an Undertaker out of character interview. Well, I think it did would have come across a bigger deal. I mean, I I think I mean we're talking about it. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, it it filtered, yeah. it filtered mm-hmm. it's for sure. It filtered down. It, it just got got a, had to get a little bit of momentum, I guess. Yeah. So mm-hmm. 
Um, I, I don't know. Was there anything that stuck out from you for that? I mean, I think, you know, they talked a lot about the character over the years and everything like that. It stuck out to me that I think he's done. Mm-hmm. I think he's done here. It yeah. mania probably. Cause I, I don't know that he would have done that if he would have not been, if his, you know, quote unquote career wasn't over. Like I, I think he has some, some business to take care of. He'll probably put over Roman at mania, something weird like that, that mm-hmm. no one wants to see. And then, uh, or Triple H or Sean again that nobody wants to see instead of putting over somebody young over him, and that'll be it for him. But heck of a career. I give him credit. He grew his hair all the way back. Grew his hair all the way back, Taker. Yeah, he wouldn't be uh, growing, he, he wouldn't be sporting the fake hair for the interview, would he? No, no, no. I wouldn't think. And as somebody who. There was. Um... Go, ahead. Go ahead. No, I have nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> so I was going to say. Just because we were talking about how awesome The Undertaker's career was. I forget who said it, but there's a quote about The Undertaker um, that they said that if he would have been, you know, six foot five, six foot six, you know, six four, he would have maybe been the greatest wrestler of all time. But because he was so tall, he spent like the first half of his career in freak show, freak show matches. Mm-hmm. And that kind of really hindered him and slowed him down. Um, but if he would have just been like of average height. Yeah his ability would have been able to shine through a lot more. And I think that that's, um, I, like I said, I forget who said it, but I, I really think it rings true because if you think about like the first half of his WrestleMania match run, um, like the, the snooka match probably should have been better, but then you get matches with like King Kong Bundy, giant, Gonz- giant King Gonzalez. Kong Bundy on the back end of, end of his career. Yeah. And giant Gonzalez. And like, if he could have, if he would have been not seven feet tall or not six foot 10, and he could have been in there earlier on with, with guys that could go, uh, we would be talking about him a lot more as, you know, the best, or at least like he, he would be more in that Shawn Michaels conversation, right? <laughs> right. I yeah. think he's in that conversation for the later half of his career, mm-hmm. but like the idea that he could have probably done so much more had he not been pigeon toed or pigeonholed into that um, that freak show spot so many times early on. Mm-hmm. Well, you know he, what I mean? even when he wasn't doing that, like the genesis of his gimmick kind of stifled what kind of matches he could work because his, like, it was more than a methodical pace. It was the Michael Myers gimmick. Like, he would walk everywhere. He would barely run the ropes. Like, he wouldn't do stuff like that. And then once he finally got to get out of his shell a little bit, like, basically after the Undertaker versus Undertaker match, like he started mm. to move a little bit quicker, but that's when he got paired up with like your Mabels, your yeah. Diesels, your Hit, guys that was in that Pittsburgh. aren't aren't like are bigger guys and still couldn't do that kind of stuff. Once he got to like ninety seven, ninety eight, and he's working Hunter, Rock, uh, Austin, stuff like that. Then I think that McFoley, was like that's why Kane, I still yeah. my favorite Undertaker is the American Badass. Huh. That's my, too, and I get a lot of crap for that. That's but. my favorite Undertaker. Yeah, me too. Because me too. like you don't have the hindrances that the dead man character provided. Mm-hmm. But you still have all the mystique and the aura that his history allowed you to have. See. Like I was with- I was hoping, hoping against <clears throat> hope that when he came back at Mania to fight John Cena, it was on a big ass motorcycle just you know, I'm an American yeah. badass. I was I'm, hoping for it. I'm gonna disagree see? with you guys. Agree, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with you guys. Okay. Sure, that was a great gimmick, but that to me followed everybody else that was doing it within that era. Mm-hmm. You, you have the Stone Cold Steve Austin, who's like the badass guy. So now you have you know the American badass. You've got Triple H doing the badass stuff. You've got the DX doing their badass stuff. For me, Undertaker has always been the Undertaker. Mm-hmm. The, the dead man. The dead man. It just that's always what he's been. Well, I also think that the American badass gimmick, though that was <laughs> him, you know, more so in real life, as they would say, with the volume turned up. Mm-hmm. People could embody that gimmick. I don't know that you could. You could give that gimmick to other folks. I don't know that you could give the Undertaker gimmick to other folks and and somebody else work it as good as he. Is. So that's why I like that. It, it, it took yeah. a special. It took a special talent to pull that kind of. So spooky Undertaker is my Undertaker. Make it last. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because for uh, that reason. And one of the things those I are to... all valid points. Yeah. Uh, can I can I make one counter point yeah, to sure. all of that? Um, without the American Badass, we don't get Undertaker versus Ric Flair at WrestleMania 18, mm-hmm. and that's one of the greatest matches ever, man. So, like, 
if for nothing else, that Arn Anderson spine buster at WrestleMania 18 doesn't happen without the American That's Badass. when we let That's Kid like Rock in, spot. though. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we let Kid Rock in, though. <laughs> I'm Listen. sorry, Missy. You yeah, were saying but something. That's let's all, be, all of let's that's fine it. for that Arn Anderson spot. Kid Rock was gonna work his way in somehow. Mm. Yes. Kid Rock yes. and professional wrestling like, like, are, are are born to be wed. And we the didn't thing, know. And we didn't know which way Kid Rock was gonna go at the time. So yeah. At least at least the American badass thing was brought on organically. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. Taker had been like buried alive and stuff like that. And like he was actually given a chance to kind of have a rebirth. Mm-hmm. That way, the dead man character can work again. Well, and so I, I feel like if he didn't change it up somehow, we wouldn't be talking about mm-hmm. him today. Well, and that's the, that's the other thing that I was just gonna make the comment about is obviously the dead man is who came back, mm-hmm. and the dead man is is the character that, at least in some capacity, the WWE feels that people can relate to the most Mm -hmm. because he didn't come back as the American badass. He came back as the undertaker. He rose. And I think that that in and of itself has, has a nod to it. The other thing that we were talking about was the fact that it takes a certain kind of individual to be able to carry that character. Right. And that's why I said, that's why I like spooky taker better because I think not everybody can do it from the chat room. Not uh, uh, American badass, not my undertaker. Not my Undertaker. Oh, not my Undertaker is a show title. I, I'll attest. <laughs> I'll attest that too much American Badass or never going back. I think would have been a bad thing because I think once you go back, um, that's when you really get the the strongest portion of Taker's career mm-hmm. is when you go back to the Dead Man and then you get through that first Kane match, but then bo- which was good, but uh, you know it wasn't like an all timer. But then that's when you start hitting that run. You got Orton. Mark Henry match, and then it's like, then we're full go with Batista, but, but, Edge, But then Sean, it was Sean. more of it was more of a hybrid at that point. Exactly, and that's it what was I think, more of a hybrid at that point. Like, to, yeah, it all builds to where you get the best chunk of Taker's career. Because like when he's doing those matches, that are like some of his best work. He's not wearing like the big purple gloves. He's not donning like, you know, he's not doing stuff like that. He's like that's that's why the Undertaker He's is a dead one of person wearing MMA he gloves. Is, <laughs> he constantly has evolved. Like he constantly has evolved and changed. And I think, except for this last run, where I feel like he's kind of devolved a little bit. Like well, when he came he out with gimmick. a mohawk. Yeah. When he came out with the shaved mohawk, I'm like, oh, oh, oh what the yeah. fuck is this Undertaker? I'm with it. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, it was awesome. Like in like. He being able to take the two completely different ideas of a gimmick and to blend them together in such a way that you can take this character, but the movements of this character and put them together. Um, like I said before, you really get the best Undertaker could be, which was he he was able to move, he was able to sell because he had that time where he he made himself realistic. But then when he comes back to the Dead Man. Um, he could do a little bit of that. Realism sort of. doesn't kill the believability of what it, this awesome because you already know was. the back catalog of his work and what mm. he could do. I I think he has a little bit of a different gimmick now because I think his his gimmick these days is basically can he still go mm. and that's it. That's like his whole gimmick. Like mm. kid, the dead it's always man that last still out, go. The, the last outlaw going for one last ride thing. And yeah, well, I mean, one and... it it was like that as soon as he started feuding with Triple H at WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, and, like when he came he back to there this. ain't no grave. I mean, well, okay. We yeah. know he's at the end of his run. We just don't know how yeah. long that run's gonna last. Yeah. And it's just like Shawn Michaels' crazy old man character towards the end, too. Everybody towards the end changes up their character to like what's this old man gonna do now? Shawn Michaels Is looks like Bill Cower. <laughs> what was Shawn Sean, Michael- <laughs> Sean, Sean Michaels looks like Bill freaking Cower. They evolved into the same person. Like at any point they could sweet chin music or call an offensive uh, sneak up the middle. Like at any point. Oh, all right. We're bringing it around and uh, you know, what's not going away. Great pizza from our good friend slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right up the street here in Beachview is res- four locations across uh, Pittsburgh. Thank you so much for those guys. Hey, they got invaded by beast man last week. 
Uh, and uh, oh, no. I don't think, man, there is a there is like a fear in their eyes when I go in there now. Uh, but uh, that was quite an experience. You can see that video going around on their Facebook page on Slice on Broadway on Facebook. And, of course, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. Let them know the mayhem sent you. And please, please be kind and don't pull a beast man on us. Go be nice to those guys. Uh, and don't. And don't throw salad on the ground. Uh, thank you so much to those guys. Hey, we'll be back after this message and the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey, man. It's all those W's, Listen, baby. You, know, you want to get you. those numbers up. On. Baby. I wish, man, I wish I wish I could host podcasts like Toddy. We're here on Wrestling Mayhem Somebody show. get that sound clip for me, there please. There you go. There you go. <laughs> like, when he goes, throw me those W's, throw me those W's, Throw baby. those W's up, baby. Like that, that, that. I can't do that. I can't do you that. You can do it. I can't do that, You baby. have it in you. Sorg, Sorg, of course Sorg, you can. Sorg is too white Sorg, for that, Sorg, and Sorg. he just comes off. It just sounds weird. <laughs> Yeah, you just, gotta, you, like, you just have to I watch a few episodes of Up Up Down, Down. I can't say With baby. Kobe. I can't. I don't wear say it. I, I can't. That. I can't wear those w- w's up, baby. I can't. I can't wear a sweet shirt like that with a lion on the back that looks like like like. <laughs> Arguably, I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> Arguably, course, I can't course, either. Yeah. <laughs> what, if you, what if you tried throw those W's up, baby? Baby. Throw those W's up if you feel welcome in this Look, chat he's, room. He's got gang signs and everything, guys. <laughs> it's not a gang sign. It's a religion. If you throw these W's up in the wow. chat, yeah. you throw these W's up in the chat, you you feel welcome at Sorgatron Media. There throw you those there W's you up and this. you're welcome. I love that. And this. that's how you get those comments up. Yes. Toddy from the Thrifty Podcast is with us, a part of the Sorgatron Media Network. This is what we do. We're family. We, we just just hang out on each other's podcasts. Yeah, that's it's fun. And then the couch. We can be dysfunctional everywhere. Yeah, that's right. We share this dysfunction. <laughs> the most comfortable couch in podcasting. There you go. There you go. That needs to be in our Google review. Should be on a shirt, and then the couch should be on it. I'll make it. Yeah, there you, you go. Want. There you go. Please, <laughs> please. Looking for graphic design. <laughs> okay. We, we have a store. We need to fill the store. Yeah, yeah. Also with us, of course, Mad Mike up at Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, wait, well, wait, wait. He's back. The other one's back. The other guest is back. I was worried for a second. <laughs> uh, Ty Cross, professional wrestler. I'm here. From across the border. <laughs> what does Risk call him? I'm not telling you which, which border. border. What? Did Which I, border? Wait, did I just call him the thing that he... Did I give you the right name? I don't know your name anymore because we've been saying the wrong one for so many weeks. <laughs> You're mine? You, did you call me Ty? I think I called you Ty. He's, he's yeah, Tay Kizzle. Tay Kizzle. Tay Kizzle yeah. from Tay System Kizzle. Elite. You can see him at Rise Wrestling with a Y. Not the one with the I. That'd be awkward. Um, so... Thrifty is full of amazing insider gimmicks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Thrifty, Thrifty Pod. I, I finally got the chat to work. I couldn't get the chat to work. Uh, uh, Thrifty Podcast. The uh, the what we like to call the Thrift Roaches. The Roaches have infested the Wrestling Mayhem oh show for oh the, boy, the Mayhem Maniacs. Thanks everybody for popping in. <laughs> popping uh, in. But anyways, we we're just talking about the uh, shoot interviews. Undertaker, somebody that you know we, we don't get to see like the out of character. Uh, uh, a bit, uh, a lot with him. So the big question for this week: Who else would you like to see do a legit shoot interview? Shoot or just an out of character, if if the case may be. Um, who who do you really want to hear what he has to say about everybody out there? So many people have done it, mm-hmm. and I I feel like the list would be kind of short, right? Yeah. Sorg. Mm-hmm. Sorg. Mm-hmm. I I have the I have the end all, all be all. Okay. The end all be all. If and and we're assuming shoot like a hundred percent real will answer any question, every question, all that stuff, right? Yeah. Vincent Kennedy McMahon. First question, Vince, have you killed somebody? Ed, Absolutely. <laughs> and and he'll say he'll say define killed. <laughs> <laughs> me or did i make the fink do it um you know I, <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen him in a while <laughs> yes oh, oh that's a good one though howard finkel oh imagine the, the, fink. imagine the stuff that guy's seen <laughs> i think the like the fink was drinking a lot seems a little unsure of himself he's seen some shit like why did, did anybody guys like him? that would be the best mean gene mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> 
I feel like those mean, dudes lived it, man. Mean, mean Gene, I think, would have some great personal stories. So yeah, um, those dudes lived it. They 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 got to live it, and they didn't have to perform in the ring the next night. Mm-hmm. So like, imagine how hammered those guys got to get. Jeez, I got. Uh, I don't know. I think I think they had to rely on getting a lot of the talent to and from shows. Yeah, yeah, that might be a point. What about you, uh, Toddy? Um, I'm actually gonna pick a couple of weird ones. Well, not well. Yeah, I guess you could say that people aren't thinking of, and and I'll explain my reasons why. I'd say number one, Medusa, because she was around in a time where women's wrestling wasn't very prominent, and she was one of the only ladies really doing it on the big stage. She was both in WWF and WCW, you know, the whole throwing the the ladies championship in the can thing. So it, she was. I mean, wrestling is still male dominated now, but that was in a time where it was just like, you know, she was one of the only legit ones. Bull Nakano would be cool. But she saw like the ins and outs of what we're hearing about now, how oppressive the business was back then. And I think she kind of, you know, took it upon herself to to get herself over and do her own thing. And that was in the heat of the Attitude Era, which wrestling fans always go back to is like a golden period. So I'd say Medusa. And I say modern day, I'd say Renee Young. I mean, she's the Mm. first ladies commentator on WWE broadcasting. Why it took so long, who knows? But anyway, she's the first one. And to hear her story of how she developed her character, you know, how she got into the business and because she's one of a kind, she's the first one who's able to do this. Mm -hmm. So I would love to hear her story. And I think that could be impactful for young ladies growing up because to hear her story, because we hear all men's story up and down the road, how somebody had Taco Bell and like farted up the car. Like we heard those stories. Like it'd be nice to have a genuine story from a genuine <laughs> and lady. Animated. And we have animated yeah, those stories. Yeah, like there's so much garbage <laughs> on the WWE network that's like Vince McMahon humor. Like, yeah. okay, let's get yeah. over it. Yeah, but yeah. it's like an honest story of how a lady well, became well, who a you, commentator. Who, who, you pro- pro- yeah, we, who you're programming for, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, you're, you're pitching these shows. Whoa. Got something going on there, and it's okay. Um, but uh, you know, but no, no, I'm with you. Those, I think those are great picks. Um, See, I have, I have one. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to have had somebody talk with Elizabeth. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, you got it. That's the correct answer, that's in the, and that's in the same line of what you're talking about, Thotty, too. Yeah, I, I think that'd be a very sad shooting. Either. It would. Was it Miss Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Miss Elizabeth. It, that's it, a good one. It would have been sad. But she helped to shape a lot of mm-hmm. my perception is as a as a young girl growing up, I wanted to be Miss Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. Like I loved when she would come out and like she was so regal in comparison. She like, was the Disney princess of professional. She wrestling. was. She really was. Mm-hmm. And to learn about she was some, well, she was well protected as a character too. Very yep. much so. And I think that that's one of the things that I loved most growing up was that you know she. She had that protection. It was kind of like, you know, she had a bunch of big brothers on yeah. uh, on the stage with her because, like, that was kind of the, the thing. Like, you have all of these dudes, and then there she is. Mm-hmm. And she was this this beacon of hope and pretty in this, yeah. you know, bushwhackers and, like, just crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, and she was never really, like, exploited, too. No. Yeah. Like, there, there was the one infamous time where, like, it was Hogan and Macho teaming up and like someone tore, like she tore off her skirt to cause a distraction. But that was really the only time like she was really, you know, yeah, I think that's a better, like that. better. That's a she better answer really than Medusa. Character. But yeah, it's the same. It's like the same premise because there's not a lot of those types of characters for young ladies to look up to. You know, you could look up to the guys, but it's nice to have your own piece of the puzzle. You know, representation is important. Absolutely. Mm hmm. She was um, almost like the one person in this world of cartoons that was real. Yes. <laughs> and that gave her like that, that it gave her that different feel. You know, when she comes out at WrestleMania seven, it's like she, she doesn't belong. And that's what makes her special. That's a good point. Like, yeah. She's just here when she was getting treated like garbage by macho and stuff. Like you felt for her because she was just real. She was a real mm-hmm. person surrounded by these huge giant monster cartoon characters yeah and it made her special it didn't make it it made her stand out in such a positive way sorg i'm jumping (laughs) i'm jumping yours Uh, okay because (laughs) tina is chiming in sherry martell Mm -hmm. another fun you know if if same era and that's just as as much different perspective as much hope and good that elizabeth was 
<laughs> Sherry Martel. Sherry Martel was the flip side of that coin. Mm-hmm. She was trouble. She was the. Mm-hmm. She was the wicked witch. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like she she had the dark side of things. But again, she she did more ringside than Elizabeth did because she got talked in, to you more. She, she got more. involved yeah. in the matches yeah. sometimes too, yeah. like she, in some capacity. She launched the solo career of Shawn Michaels. She did, mm-hmm. and later with Harlem, he, like, she even did work with them. Like, mm-hmm. yep, yeah. I mean, those are all those are all I think yeah. good answers. I I just look in the chat because I got it to work. I see a lot of W's for Mariah and Thompson, and then. uh <laughs> Uh, Josh Larkin, my co-host for Thrifty, says, I still cry anytime I watch them reunite. And that's talking about Macho and Miss Elizabeth. Uh, yes. And, you know, I think I just realized this now. I think because the first thing I ever saw in wrestling, I've talked about this a bunch of times before, was when um, Macho Man got his arm bit by Jake the Snake Roberts. Mm-hmm. I think the reason it really connected with me was because the third party in that, like, angle was Elizabeth crying. Mm-hmm. Like, got it just over sobbing in the ring and just like in my like tiny kid sized brain that was real that was real like, i don't know that was... it wasn't <laughs> like i i still think it might be <laughs> well i mean it was a defang yeah. Snake. yeah 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 so so i mean well, it, sorry it was more like macho was like being gummed but <laughs> But there, there was blood. Like there was blood. Women. While we're talking about like women that were important, I have just steps off the the shoot interview thing a little bit because she had done a lot of them. But um, the bit, one of the cool things about China, I want to talk about China for one second. I was watching. I think it was like WrestleMania 15 or something. I was, something while I was doing the dishes in my house, and my wife walked by, and she had never seen China wrestle before, and she stopped and turned her head, and walked over and started watching. And I think that's the kind of cool effect that China had on a lot of girls um, because she was different and because she stood out so well that, like, my wife, who, you know, isn't the biggest wrestling fan, just walked by, turned her head, saw China, walked over and just started watching. Well, and I think she had that effect on people. The other thing about China, and this is, again, from a woman's perspective on it. Until China, most of the other women were dainty they did bra and panty matches they did manager stuff they Mm. did some basic in-ring stuff but nothing side piece stuff yeah they did side piece stuff exactly china was legit living in a man's world like she could she could go toe-to-toe with those guys Mm -hmm. and it was something interesting to see as a woman because it was like okay yeah she's huge yeah but she's also still feminine. She's also still a woman. She and still had that well, power behind her. That, exactly. Yeah. It's it awesome. It was also very key what they categorized her as. Like, Marlena was a valet. Mm-hmm. Sable was a valet. China was a fucking bodyguard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how she was introduced. Triple H, this jacked up roided monster from Stanford, said, China is my bodyguard, which means the only other bodyguard I had known in wrestling at that point was Diesel. And you could tell Diesel was a bodyguard because he was seven feet tall and he was muscles out the ass. Mm-hmm. With I- Triple H, Triple H saying China's his bodyguard. was cool. That means Triple H is saying China is tougher than him. Yeah. And, and that is a validation of like validation. Making her I, a man, out. rely on this woman to protect me. I missy. This is this is the fun thing that I just heard in my head, and it just it just made me laugh. So I had to share it. You're talking about Diesel, and in my head, I am hearing that we're still talking about women, and I'm like, wait, what? Diesel's a woman? Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's been a long night. Hey, from the chat room, a lot lot going on out there. Tina says, uh, "Would have liked to have had a shoot interview with Dusty." Uh, Wheels says, "Triple H." Jeez, if anything ever falls through with him, you never know with investors. You know he'd be a good one, and you know he would t- he would spill the guts. Man, his book will be amazing. Uh, Alex Miller singing on the Spirit Era, Champa, uh, Andre, and Eddie Guerrero. Oh, Andre, Andre, man. Andre. whoever Jeez. said that, very yeah. cool. Josh is saying that was all Alex Miller. Josh Larkin says Bobby Heenan, Atina with Sherry Mattel, as we discussed. Uh, Josh Larkin is all, uh, something about Snuka. Um, Pierre Jason Kelly on the Twitter, Johnny Arcade is saying. Um, Mine would be Becky Lynch because she's punny. <laughs> Actually, you know who'd probably have a really, really good one too? 
Hmm. Steve Lombardi. Oh yeah. yeah. The Brooklyn, Brooklyn Brawler. Brawler. Yes. Been there. And also Anyone been uh, that close to Vince for that long. Yeah. Has stories. I mean, look at Bruce Pritchard these days. He's basically just doing a a persistent long shooter interview at this point. Yeah. Really? And that kind of Yeah, but I don't I don't know if I necessarily trust his perspective. Well, I mean, I mean it's a have you listened to a lot of shooter interviews? <laughs> that's, that's, that's like reading the Hulk Hogan book and saying that's a shoot. Like, eh. <laughs> it, it's probably your perspective on how things happen. Yeah. I was trying to think of like older ones too. Wait, what happened? No, we're still there. Yeah, we're still there. We're, we're waiting yeah, for you to think. Oh, because uh, everything cut out, and then when I tried to chime in, no one was talking, and I thought maybe I missed something. No, no. we're waiting for you, man. No. We're giving you the time. Oh, we know okay. you're on a delay. Um, yeah. Well, no, because I, w- I was saying, like, I was trying to think of older ones, and, like, one of them that I thought of, which was kind of weird, is Vern Gagne. Mm. Just because, like, for someone who ran the AWA and had all these names come through, mm-hmm. and, and then also had, like, a specific side of history to tell, because they weren't the NWA, they weren't the WWF, they were the AWA. I thought that would be another cool one. If you could just sit Vern Gagne down and let him tell stories, he probably had some good stuff. And finally, I just like to record Ty Cross having a meal with Virgil. Um, you have a meal know. with Virgil? Sure. Whoa. At Olive Garden. Uh, just make sure you're not paying. Only if he wears a gray sweatsuit. That's that's like that's like eighty five percent going to happen without prodding. Anyways, uh, I want to give a shout out to our friends at OccupyProWrestling dot com. Uh, they want to show their support to a good cause for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, of course, you're seated on the big shows, and uh, they're getting they're getting in on it too. Uh, they'd love to have you be a part of it when you buy their merch at What a Maneuver. Fifty uh, percent of all normal per- merch proceeds will. Uh, go to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. But wait, there's more. Uh, they also have that in pink, and 100% of the proceeds uh, from those items will go to the BCRF. Uh, check out Occupy Pro Wrestling gear at whatamaneuver.net. If you go to occupyprowrestling.com, you can uh, get a link straight over to their store and get more information on the uh, Breast Cancer Research Foundation at BCRF. Dot org really awesome thing that Occupy Pro Wrestling is doing so go check that out and support them in their cause here this month so let's see we already did talk about a little bit of a uh, uh, rise and scare house but I know Toddy you have a little bit else going on yeah over yeah, yeah. There. I have some more stuff yeah um, so you have, you have some stuff going I have on. some more stuff here that um, if there's any listeners younger listeners I'm assuming because younger listeners are usually smaller. Um, I have some. We do have parental discretion. At least tiny. Are you a tiny person that um, can wear a small and happens to have like a zero yeah. wrestler? Um, yeah. If you're uh, a li- a little a uh, little smaller, um, I actually have in my thrift finds that I found at a, a Goodwill outlet. I found an entire hall's worth of Jeff Hardy T-shirts, and I'm gonna. Um, this one is the oldest one. This is from 1997, Attitude Era. This is a youth medium, and it's a cutoff. Um, extreme. Um, extreme is not a mood. It's a lifestyle. says that on the back. <laughs> um, and then on the front is the classic Hardy's logo. Okay. Cool thing about this is, for whatever reason, I wear shirts without sleeves. Somehow I get away with it. No idea how. But I would actually wear this, but it does. it's a little short on me. So if there's any younger listeners... Um, that want to get in touch with us, I could leave that one here. Um, over over time, these are kind of back and forth. I'm trying to go in the order of oldest to newest. Well, Toddy, you're getting a shout out from Hannah that she's very small and you know her oh, address. Oh yeah, Hannah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, Hannah. You could have one of these. Why not? Uh, thanks for watching. By the way, she's a fan of Thrifty Podcast and personal friend. Um, this is uh, Jeff Hardy. This is another baby Jeff Hardy. This is the only blue one here. Um, this is even and tinier. That, that's the weird, like when they were like putting stuff on. It's not centered in the shirt. It's in the lower, like left corner. Yeah, it's like shirt. in the lower left corner of yeah, the shirt. Yeah. And this one's a tinier one. But these are from the same person. You'd have to think because they're all Jeff Hardy related. But as the t-shirts uh, grow in age, they grow in size. Oh. So it's from the same person. You have to assume mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. of that. And then this one, actually, I'm I'm probably. No, not this was the next one. And this again has the big Attitude Era 
logo on it, and this mm-hmm. is a Jeff. And you could see, and, and it's it's post get the f out. It's post get the f out, and you can see that the uh, for viewers that are looking in the live stream, um, for those on a podcast, this is the third Jeff Hardy shirt, and this is just Jeff Hardy right on the front of it. And you could see the size of the t-shirts are getting bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, now this is the one I think I'm gonna keep because I could fit in it. Um, this is just the Hardy Boys, and it's a softer t-shirt. And so this is another one. And these were all found together. Um, and then you got the Hardy logo on the back. Matt looking young and mean on the front. Um, Jeff Hardy, the first one to perfect the undercut before 2011 when we all started getting them. <laughs> um, and then this one, I thought this was interesting too. Uh, this one is actually from 2008. So these are probably one of those shirts that you buy outside the venue, like going oh. in or leaving type of thing. But what a weird year for wrestling and a weird pay-per-view. This is No Mercy 2008, the shirt. And I'll hold that up for the camera. On the back, it does uh, it does mention the card. Mm-hmm. And from uh, bottom to top, the, the ladies opened up the night. The women's championship was Beth Phoenix versus Candice Michelle. For the ECW championship, it was Matt Hardy versus Mark Henry. Mark Henry with Tony Atlas. Oh, hey. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. He remembers the laugh. If it, next match, if Ray loses, he must unmask Ray Mysterio versus Kane. Um, match for number one contender, Batista versus JBL. Uh, Undertaker and Big Show was on this card as well, and we would see that in later years as well. Uh, Triple H versus Jeff Hardy for the WWE Championship. So knowing this Jeff Hardy fan, they were definitely in attendance for this. Um, this was his match for the title. It's really kind of sad how many of these people are still wrestling. Yeah. All of them. It's, what, what I think is really sad is somebody really loved Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Loving Jeff Hardy. And then all their shirts are like, yeah, they, they gave don't up. have them anymore. And the so main they event. They loving Jeff Hardy. They stopped loving wrestling. Which is both sad. Um, the main yeah. event for No Mercy was the World Heavyweight Championship oh, match. that ladder match. Ladder match, Chris Jericho versus oh. Shawn Michaels. And that's where uh, mm-hmm. Jericho, um, in the uh, the lead up to the show, is when Chris Jericho gave Shawn Michaels his wonky eye. Does it, does it list the arena in that on the back um, there? I think it does, right? Because, uh, I did the, see it, like right? The one I have from Armageddon does that. I, I it does feel it. like No it's Mercy not. 2008. The Rose Garden. What is the yeah. Rose Garden in Chicago. Yeah, oh. I was gonna say I thought that was Chicago because I yep. have one from the no, from Armageddon, which is you know the Batista chair I sit on here every week. Yeah, that was I was not that front. Somebody gave that to me later. And um, then the last one would be when SmackDown really reached a, a low. Oh yeah, where they had where the, well they had Kali. Oh, <laughs> don't let Riz let you hear that. Such a weird whoa, whoa, look. By the way, that is a great Kali pose right there. Yeah, that's that as good like, as Kali gets. Yeah, that's great. So with this this SmackDown shirt, the, the stars were so uh, few and far between that Edge is on here twice. What? Yeah, Edge is on here uh, two oh, times. Oh, is that him with the elbow drop? Yeah. I thought that was Sean Morrison. Okay. And Jeff Hardy is on here two times. Okay, all right. So it's Edge twice, Jeff Hardy twice, great Kali, and Triple H. Mm-hmm. And that was the SmackDown brand of 2009 and that was the last one so yeah, yeah it's a it's that an interesting like story like, yeah it sounds like an interesting story that's somebody's because somebody's lifetime man that's probably like every shirt they got when they went to a live show and as yeah and, exactly and, yeah. and and the no mercy is from chicago and you found it here yeah i found uh we find stuff i just found a um a president obama tablecloth from kenya <laughs> no no <laughs> <BS. laughs> No, I'm serious. <laughs> <Pretty bomb. laughs> that's not a that's not a bit. I, I, from Kenya. And and not that's only a is it bomb item. And and not only is it from Kenya, and not only is it a tablecloth, but it's an uncut tablecloth. So there's two tablecloths in one and they needed to cut it down the middle. And I'm assuming that when it left the manufacturer, it was uh what would you call like they can't sell it because it's not cut correctly. Mm-hmm. So it was probably discarded. But yeah, I have uh I, I'll I'll throw it up somewhere, but uh, as long with the W's, baby, throw up the W's. But yeah, but the Ken uh, from Kenya, I got a Barack Obama, and it says in in Kenyan like "Welcome Obama." Welcome Obama. Well, yeah, like a, it's like a, a nice little sentence. But yeah, that was something that I found in uh, Heidelberg, PA, which is like <laughs> ten minutes out of Pittsburgh. 
That is amazing. Yeah, welcome to the life, brother. Um, the life, the thrifty <laughs> life, man. Yeah, dude. Where oh, do you think this geez. shirt's from? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know where that shirt's from. <laughs> I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh fantastic always always a pleasure having you on there mm-hmm. uh shit. i don't know where to go from that die are you are you thrifting <laughs> i th- i thrift on occasion yeah um my wife's a big wait what is this is this a cat stuff. am i looking at a cat yeah. right now okay my cat's here <laughs> i didn't look at your shop for a while and i'm like what's going on <laughs> i have three of them and, and they're all sweethearts Dude, so. it's it's not a cat. It's but I your thrift. your beard. I on occasion. That's right. It's your extended beard. Nah. Cats are always extended beards if you're nice enough to them, because they always want to sit real high up on your chest and under your chin. That's I didn't know that. But yeah, I, that's that's, yeah, that's, a, that's a bit of a wrinkle. I think like a I'm lot a, of I'm, I'm kind of a cat aficionado. I kind of like an enthusiast. I I know a lot about cats. I. I would assume, and I mean, I mean, I'm not an independent wrestler, but I would assume that the in, in, indie wrestling community could find a lot of cool stuff while thrifting, like adding some pieces to their gear. I know Bad Boy Joey Janela gets a hats from the thrift store, his his vintage hats. Hmm. He gets a lot of those secondhand shopping stuff like that. Um, big inspiration, not so much his knees, but his personality. I have a bad knee too, <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope he, he he's the best. I w- I was ho- I'll, I hope he he ends up in Impact because he's the coolest forever. I love him. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, some some of my best hats are from thrift stores too. They, there you go. Really is awesome. I stuff. think a lot of people could find if indie wrestlers go to thrift stores, they could just find different pieces of different stuff. Like you even think locally, you know, there's there's a lot of people. Uh, the 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 kid right out of uh, IWC that Ryan Die he has like a lot of cool like gear. Um, you hey, could the find professor, that. you mean the professor, yes. uh, the professor, uh, and and he could probably find a lot of that stuff, a lot of like beakers and a lot of smoke machines stuff like that. H- hit me up, I could give you a smoke machine, brother. No problem. Wait, wait, you just have a spare s- smoke machine? Uh, well, I have two smoke machines. One is mine; it's not a spare, wait, and wait, then wait, I have wait, a spare. We're okay, <laughs> so off of wrestling now. But what do you do with your smoke machines? Well, I only use one. Party? Yeah. Oh, I did just put it on in my room and just have a blast. <laughs> <laughs> just have a blast. Rain? Just have it. Put that on. You know, put a you know like a frozen dinner in the microwave. Have dinner. Watch wrestling. <laughs> Freaking just Sword. it's all about the atmosphere. Yeah, dude. Sword, it's all about something the I said, something I know we've been missing for years on this podcast and have never vocalized it. Oh no. Is a is a smoke machine. Oh no. Oh, what are you doing? Sorg, <laughs> Sorg, if we got a smoke machine and we got a soundboard, we would blow the fuck. If we up. had a smoke machine, people will call the, the call the fire department on us because they think there's a fire in because here. Because we're on fire! That's, that's- that's why we're not that gonna do a smoke a machine. Point. You're gonna attract attention. You don't want me to bring a smoke machine? We're gonna do saying? we're going to do a bubble machine. Ooh. Oh, I don't have a hookup on bubble next machine. Next time you have Connor on, you should do the smoke machine. Okay. No, next time we have Connor on, I want to do the bubble machine. I got if you need some human teeth, I got some in the mail coming. <laughs> what? Human teeth. You need some. If you last need some time human... I last time I checked, I have human teeth. They're in my face. Yeah, we're we're all good. I got we're some on the on way. That. If we need, I need it. Just That's saying. such a big Lebowski statement. It's like I can get you a towel. <laughs> yeah, you I want mean, molars? You want my custards? Teeth. We got them. I know some people. I know some people. I know, I know some people in the right places. I know some people. You want in the right some places. incisors? I'm the incisor insider. Um, I'll talk, yeah, I'll talk to my teeth guy. Somebody from guy. <laughs> a listener to the show, actually, this is a, n- a new gift, so it wasn't technically mine, donated a dead robin in a jar to me. <laughs> so I have. Oh, a... was it Jason Todd? No, but that would be that would be cool. <laughs> but yeah, I have a dead bird in the jar <laughs> now. Jokes. If you ever want to need one of those, Sorg, for wrestling at any oh, point. Oh, remind me to show you the, uh, the the store I found. Or if you're a Dallas. scientist. Or if you're a scientist. Oh, hey. I'm Ryan a scientist. Dye. Ryan Dye, I hope you're listening. Wow, you, yeah, you can, you can have some stuff for that. Anyways, okay. That's a really funny idea. Uh, uh, a scientist, but like, He's not like a crazy mad scientist. He's an actual scientist, and he brings like a dead bird in a jar to the ring. And it's like, why do you have that? Well, that's what I was working on when I had to come out here. I was studying this <laughs> dead bird. The bird was alive. I didn't get to feed it because I had to come out here for my match. It's kind of the next step in occupational uh, gimmicks, isn't it? I've been corrected. Yeah, at that point where you're just a scientist, you're not like crazy or an evil professor. You're just a guy who like 
has a has a job and this is his side hustle and he's trying to make a little extra because being a scientist doesn't uh, pay well, well. You're just trying to fund your research. <clears throat> exactly. That's it. I, to fund your research. I've been corrected. I did not know this. But the the tablecloth that I was speaking of is actually <laughs> properly called uh it, it's a woman's wrap actually it's it's a wrap it's not a tablecloth so unfortunately I was wrong on that one but I do have two That's since disrespectful it, well it, it, they're not cut <laughs> so now I could have a tablecloth and then I could also have uh somebody wearing one as a wrap so we could have a little sitting bit of at the table that would be great that's the life um <laughs> maybe one day maybe one day multi-purpose pool yeah. there you go there you go hey uh, i support thrifty podcast and also support our friends uh, uh including rise wrestling where you can see ty cross you can find that lost uh, uh, uh system elite uh, iwc match over there at indie wrestling.us we got a lot of stuff going on there we have the indie wrestling network we can check out duke and doe's hardcore memories a lot of rise wrestling from this year, Premier Championship Wrestling, Welterweight Wrestling, The Legend of Virgil, The Montreal Theory, and so much more. If you go over there, you get a week trial at five ninety nine a month afterwards. But go check it out, um, see if you like it, and uh, and it's another way to get that infusion of independent wrestling uh, coming up. We're having a lot of new content uh, in the wings. Uh, going to be added to the system and also just released is a rise wrestling i know i know ty a lot of people have been gunning at uh the people that entered you last month over there yeah with tony johnson yeah it still hurts um i had my actually had my knee wrapped around the post by gannon jones mm -hmm. and then it was struck with a steel chair by duke davis and um i i I put off going to the doctor because I wasn't sure, but then when I couldn't be rise on the sixth, I was like, it's not a good look. I should probably get this thing taken care of. So I'm getting a look at, we'll see what happens. But mm -hmm. for now it, it hurts. Yeah. It was painful. Well, we can still see a lot of you when you had the good wheel over there. Andy wrestling. There's a lot of ba backlog footage of, of system elite from older shows that people should go on and check out. Um, whether you skip to the system elite matches or not, um, mm -hmm. uh, it's totally worth it just to, you know, get on there, check out all those old Rise shows. Rise is a good company. There's a lot of uh, wrestling for everybody. I mean, a guy like Lee Moriarty can go out there and just have, like, this awesome, high-quality, super indie-style match. And then uh, you could watch System Elite versus Golden Sheik in a Loser Wears a Dress match. Yep, that and happened. And really, it, and everything in between, like, and that's the cool thing about Rise, and that's something that I know Brandon and Marcus had always gone for, was this almost like variety show feel of everybody that goes there is going to get something that they want out of it. Whether you want like the best possible wrestling you can find or the most gimmicky fun stuff. Loser stuff in a kids. dress match. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever still on loser in a dress match? <laughs> hey, I've never hey, seen a loser hey, in a dress match. They got when the, the losers really owned it. Just saying. Well, yeah. Okay. That's how you do it. One of the losers was Calvin Couture. Yeah. Of course he's he's going to own it because... Yeah, BC was digging on it. I mean... Yeah, BC wasn't actually required to put a dress on, and he was like, all right, I'm doing this. <laughs> Did he start stripping in the middle of the ring? Like, Probably. Calvin Couture, I don't know why he doesn't like me so much, um, because he's one of my favorite people. I love Calvin Couture. Awesome. Uh, Just so, the side note, I love Calvin. <laughs> so check all that out. A lot of great stuff from Rise Wrestling and all the great promotions that we support over there at IndieWrestling.us. A lot of that, especially Rise with the Y, is available on VOD. You don't even have to put a lot of coin down in order to check out this stuff. Or, again, check out most of this year is available on the Indie Wrestling Network with your free trial. Links over there at IndieWrestling.us. And also go check out the videos. There's clips of the latest Rise Wrestling show, which includes Matt Connor, the Reaper, taking on the Beastman, uh, as well as a big, uh, a big, uh, you know, a big grudge match between uh, David Lawless, the Gavel, and a Lumberjack match against Brandon K, his trainer, uh, and so much more. Check it out IndieWrestling.us. All right, guys, it is that time to find out. What you learned in wrestling this week. I'm not going to say the peanut. I already said my peanut butter thing, but that was not so much wrestling. That was just from a wrestler who was very tall and got scared at the scare house. Uh, but what did you guys learn from wrestling this week? Uh, Bert, um, go ahead. You can go first if you want. I was just going to say, like, uh, I don't watch WWE just because I don't have cable. Um, but I go on Bleacher Report 
like just to read up on what happened, kind of get. So really, the only opinion that I'm getting is Bleacher Report's opinion. But I noticed, uh, I learned that WWE will not shy away from really putting the same match out there time after time. Holy oh, <laughs> shit, are you right there? <laughs> Holy shit. And that's not like, and that's not even from a from a from a, a judgmental perspective. Like, I'm not looking at them and saying, "How dare they do that?" Because, I mean, if it works, great. You know, I don't have an opinion one way or the other. But I mean, I noticed it was it was they did that triple threat match again. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're clearly yeah, not watching it. It does not I'm work. Not, I'm just reading. Every, I'm reading it, every week. It, it does not work. It got a B or a B plus on Bleacher Report, so I thought it was all right. But I that's that's. A uh, high estimation. Yeah, that's a high that's estimation. Uh, but that was something that I learned because they did, they did. Um, what was it? Rollins and McIntyre again. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then they did for free Ambrose and Ziggler for free. Uh-huh. Threw it away. And then they did the triple threat or the six man. Yep. We got for the first time learned- ever Samoa Joe and Jeff Hardy last week. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. cool though. That was that was that was kind and of cool. hell, and hell we got Ray versus Nakamura tonight, which I was looking out of the corner of my eye, looked like a real fun match. I, I people were saying the chat room was pretty good too. So uh I also learned that WWE isn't gonna put a lot of um people from foreign countries into this World Cup. They uh um it's the the roster is full. It is officially eight Americans. <laughs> really? Eight Americans. Dang. Because that would have yep. been a good spot for a guy like McIntyre. Oh, yeah, it would have been great. Or because anyone. He can step at, because, like, not that I don't like what they're doing with him, because I'm not going to complain really about anything that's going on in the business because everything seems to be going really well right now. But, you know, that would have been a good opportunity, a low-risk opportunity to kind of put McIntyre out there by himself in front of what is your main roster audience. Mm-hmm. And um, kind of let them see what he does outside of Ziggler and Strowman, you know what I mean? And really kind of introduce him that way. So then, if they do go through with this breakup down the line, and you do branch McIntyre off, well, people don't have to. You don't have to take that two month process of learning who he is as a singles competitor, squashing people, because you've already seen it. You give him a run, maybe to the semifinals or whatever, mm-hmm. or put him in the finals with a guy like with whoever you want to put over for the whole thing. I don't know. That's, you know, that's my little fantasy booking thing. I don't know. Yeah, that works. <laughs> All right. Well, you toddy. Um, well, just watching uh, Bound for Glory, that would be the, the last show probably in my mind. Um, I know a lot of people aren't, but I'm a big fan of Eli Drake, and I think that uh, he could be uh, a, a little bit of an undercard name coming up in the business. I mean, he's been with Impact for a while. He seems to like you know, he'll do the job for them, you know, he'll run as champion. And I think that uh, he could be uh, something that they focus on as a company with Aries gone. I think he could be your top heel. And I think he could shine in that position. That's what I learned. Good. What about you, Mike? Uh, I learned that Chelsea green is really, really good at wrestling. I need, I really need to catch up on Lucha. Oh, sword. So behind. I fell so Uh, behind. Sword. Do you want to know who she had a match with? Mm. And it's, Pentagon. Ah! And it is like th- this past week's episode of Lucha, and we will get to it once Sword catches up, I promise. Um, Lucha has built up so many strong female characters. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Naturally, too. Naturally. They didn't shoehorn them in. It's just good writing. Mm-hmm. Can I ask yeah, a and, question? And they, yeah, sure. Is Penta going to the WWE? Um, no idea. Because I read like maybe two weeks ago that was like a big thing that was happening there, and I haven't heard anything since. There is a. I mean, thing. I'm sure they're probably interested. Yeah, there's a like, thing. I read that he signed. No, Phoenix. No, nowhere, nowhere's reported they signed. Phoenix and Penta okay. have reportedly stopped taking bookings in 2019. They've been telling promoters not to not to book them for shows in two, 2019. And there's been some speculation is because they're planning to sign or they're planning to be busy because they're telling promoters no for 2019. Yeah, well, it could be well, just they're going to J- Japan or something. Or, yeah, it could yeah. mean absolutely nothing. It could mean absolutely nothing, but the speculation is that's why. Because they, short, they're, funny, they're looking at... Short, funny story about that. Um, Mark Mann one time was trying to get in, ta- in contact with Chris Hero about Rise. And Hero kind of gave him the... Um, 
Uh, you know, man, I'm not really looking at anything past April right now. I'm kind of booked up, and then from there, I'm going to see what's going on. And then not long after that, he showed up in WWE again. Mm-hmm. So that was a, that was a thing that happened with uh, with Mark Man that we all thought was really funny. Well, I mean, NXT has War Games in November, so we'll see who shows up in the crowd as NXT's new signees. Yay! The first- and and I'm I'm just excited. Because in a couple of weeks, I'm going to get to see Phoenix versus Kenny Omega. Oh, son of a bitch. Anybody going on the cruise? Uh, Anybody going on oh, the yeah. cruise? I'm not going on the cruise. Okay. No. I learned, I learned that uh, the WWE 2K game has a podcasting segment on it. Oh, God. Representation? Really? All right. Yeah. No, it, it better not fucking Sam be Roberts Rosenberg. Rosen. It's probably Rosenberg. It's probably Sam oh, Roberts. God. All right. You know what? I was going to buy 2K19. If Rosenberg's fucking in that game, I ain't buying it. Unconfirmed. Does unconfirmed. Know, does anyone know if it's still going to be really glitchy for the Switch? Oh, I'm sure. Oh, oh I is. I'm sure. I, I don't have the deets on that, but I will say yeah. I think definitively. Yep. yep. Almost almost certainly. Uh, yeah. Shame, man. Yeah. Um, from the chat room, Wheels learned that he can't wait to play uh, 2K19 My Career Mode. Uh, Josh learned that Impact Wrestling has better wrestling on their pay-per-views than WWE. Um, do, 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 uh, and Alex Miller learned nothing. YouTube's back. YouTube, YouTube's back. We learned. Learned. <laughs> YouTube is back. You can watch all those. You can watch all those stolen uh, um, um, wrestling our, matches. Yeah. Our there. long national nightmare is over. That's you right. That's you right. also look me up on YouTube and watch old matches of my great band. That's right. right. Ty Cobb, everyone. Ty, Ty Cobb. Yes. Ty Cobb on YouTube. Ty, Ty Cobb wrestling. That's why I switched. That's why I switched it from from Tyler to Ty was because of Ty Cobb because I was doing the Great Bambino the baseball thing, and that was the original <laughs> reason why. That I, I was originally Tyler Cross, and I cut it down to Ty for that reason, and I just liked how it sounded better. Yeah, well, it's good uh, catching up with you since I definitely saw you at Peyton Peyton Graham's <laughs> at WrestleMania. Yeah. Thanks for catching up. It's Tell been a while. I think that was me. It was you. So we know that. Um. <laughs> no one knows who you are, Ty. Here's the thing. You know what? You think it was me, then it was me. And I'm glad that we got to share at least what you think was that moment I together. Had a, I had a great time. It was, and it was a positive one. So is, I'm, I'm happy, man. Is your, favorite, is your favorite soda Diet Coke? No. Had one that night. I'd never know. No, had one that <laughs> night. I'm worried about who this is running around Peyton's apartment or Peyton's house. It looks like it was a half decade ago. I hadn't talked to him since then. <laughs> and I haven't talked to you uh, till now. I haven't talked to you till now. He's yeah. Oh no. He was always a sweetheart. <laughs> he was always a sweetheart. Oh geez. Anyways. <laughs> I, uh, guys, we got a lot of stuff going, coming up. Uh, we have uh, this yeah. Thursday. Yes. Hey, what did you learn? Producer Missy. I'm so lost Missy, right now. Missy kicked some serious ass tonight. Yes, Missy did. did so, so, so good uh, as expected. I appreciate that. Absolutely. What I learned is that when you get Raylin oh. and Holla Dead together. Oh. Swole. They are swole and it they is amazing. Swole. Where's the gym? They are swole. Have you seen this video? I haven't seen it. There, it, it it's Holla Dead and Raylin. I just, Rachel, Rachel dropped, I just dropped the link it's in, in the, the chat room. Sick. They are they are they are pumping and they're they're in the hotel asking where the where the gym is and yelling a lot. That's awesome. <laughs> it is fantastic. I don't know how Raylin has all this energy, but she has a lot of it. Uh, and these videos pop up all the time. So to go go follow her on social media, of course. Uh, uh, well, and actually, this, I, this I have, is on Holla Dead's. More. It's on holidays. So yeah, okay. so go follow holidays. Uh, those, yeah, she gets together with some of those girls, like like her, or, or there's a great pictures with her and Jinx uh, when they visited the uh, penitentiary in West Virginia. Aaron Aaron West says I love their Instagrams. Yeah, yeah I, I do follow in, them. Yeah. Good Instagrams, a lot of abs. You're gonna yeah. see a lot yes. of oh my god, a lot of flexed does. abs going it's amazing. on. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of like lion face. Um, mm-hmm. Lee Morar- Moriarty should really have a discussion with her. Um, but well, anyway, he didn't have a problem with the lion face. Oh, no, no, lemon, lemon, yeah, he's lemon face, lemon face. He had a lot of problem with the did lemon. Did you see this gif? I, I, did you see the gif <laughs> I got out there of him like uh, putting Doctor Dan's uh, pamphlet down his pants? <laughs> oh, good stuff. I'm gotta talking, be careful, paper cuts. I, you know what? I gotta say, like Rise Wrestling has to be the most gifable show that we film. Yeah, There's, probably. They're, they're, like, visually, a lot of spots. A lot of yeah, cool spots. Like, yeah, it's full of characters. Man. It is. Absolutely is. Absolutely is. And everybody's having a good time. Um, 
I talked to somebody who was at the party. I, I'm I'm talking oh, to somebody yeah, so the, who is at in the, the party. Investigative journalist at the party. party. At the party. I'm trying to get pictures of that day. I didn't talk Please to because I wasn't there. Yeah. So far I'm gonna love it when they come back and you are. So far you're clean, I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sore. Sore, can I drop one more thing that I learned real quick? Sure, sure. I, I learned that Sean Phoenix is the most positive person in the universe. Oh, my OMG, God. Yes. I've yes. never seen anyone stay more positive through something than, than him. Yes. And it's insane. I like, mean, in a good way. It's yeah, the, the Phoenix will rise for sure. Oh, my. Yes. <sighs> that, yes. That, that boy. We, we have to stop him from rising too early is the problem. <laughs> That's <laughs> why I texted him that. I said, I said, dude, whatever you do, man, don't rush. And he's yeah. Like, yeah. He's I, like, whatever. <laughs> I, I'm really concerned because, like, you know, we've had like, like DJ Z did the thing. Rip. Mike. Hmm. Oh, I, I said DJ Z. Yeah, I know. Sorg, I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. Oh, okay. I thought you're gonna make. I'm just kidding. <laughs> DJ Z did, did the thing where he almost died in Mexico City and was wrestling like three months later. Uh, you know where he probably I, shouldn't have, and and I'm sorry. I, I wasn't gonna do it because I thought you were being serious, like talking about serious. I know, stuff but I was I was well, leaving a moment DJ for levity. Z almost died. Yes. Okay. So well, being serious. Well, I, I I know. Like I I remember hearing all about his. Yes. Uh, yes. All right. Ne- next time I'll I'll do a somber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, but anyways, uh, no. Yeah. So I'm worried about that. But you know, considering the issues he's having, I'm, I'm hoping that he takes some time with that and everything. So, uh, but he's got a lot of people looking out for him. Uh, so Sean Phoenix, so you, you know, of course, you know, had a uh, little bit of a mishap at IWC. Uh, he's uh, he, uh, look at his Instagram. You know, he's talking a lot about what's going on with him and everything. So X Sean X Phoenix X. I think I got all the X's uh, on Twitter, and uh, he's doing a lot of stuff over there. And and I have been uh, in contact with him about what's going on lately with him. So, and uh, he's a good cat, man. Yep, yep. And hopefully, uh, hopefully, we'll get some some cool stuff with him coming back uh, very very soon. So, I've been sending him pictures and videos of uh, of my ducks because he's real into ducks also. So, like to cheer him up, I've just been taking videos of my ducks running around the yard and texting them to him. <laughs> Awesome, Ty Cross. Thank you for letting us get to know you, especially Mad Mike. I had a very nice time. I'm excited to do this again. Maybe next week we'll talk about it. Maybe next week. <laughs> we'll see what happens, man. Wow. Oh, Jeez. that's a lot. That's really presumptive, Mr. Cobb. Hey, Sork. That's very <laughs> book himself, baby. I'm good Sork. For the show. I'm good. Yes. The show. I'm a professional opinion. I'm like JBL every week on Fox News. Are you prepping to close out the show? That's not a good. I'm trying to. We have events that we need to talk about. I'm trying, but we try. Okay, you're throwing me off. Uh, no, the, <clears throat> we'll get events here in a second. Uh, where can people find you online, Ty? Um, I think I'm on everything. Insta- well, I'm on Instagram and Twitter uh, at Big Bad Ty Cross, and um, I'm on Facebook. Just look for me. Um, I'm probably in everybody that you know's friend list. Wow. So, I don't know. Look up Edric. Wow. And all of their party <laughs> pictures that you were definitely at. <laughs> Drink, so, hey, he's the one drinking Diet Coke, you guys. That night. The one drinking I Diet Coke. I've never drank Diet Coke in my life. Not that I'm against pop. I'm just wor- better, worse pop for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Big Bad Tie Cross on everything except Facebook. I don't even know what my Facebook link is. Like that weird slash numbers at the end. I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll find. We'll up. find. You'll, you'll find. He's the one with the flannel. The beard. Just, and the just flannel. look through our old chat archives, and you'll be able to find him all over the chat. Yep, exactly. Are you gonna do? Um, are you gonna do my graphic with the Twitter handle underneath of it? No, we don't do that anymore. Well, you just did it a week ago. No, no I don't think I did. Yeah, I think you did it because remember I said that I wanted mine over uh, Virgil's picture. Oh yeah, we did do that for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we Sorg, did. I caught you in a lie. No, just a me- bad memory. Toddy, Thrifty Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thrifty Podcast. Subscribe on iTunes. Give us a five star review. There you go. Um, shoot some stuff in there. Throw those W's up if you feel welcome for sure. But uh, yeah, check out the show, thriftypodcast.com. It's me, usually my friend Josh or my friend Ryan. And we That's go right. out, gather some stuff, and uh, we have a thrift haul. So thanks for everybody listening. And to all the mayhem maniacs out there, thanks for putting up with me. Oh, wait, are you closing my show now? Is that what's happening? I, I, I closed like, my piece. I feel like you just closed. Okay. No, I closed my piece I of the see, show. I and see. then I was going to go off all my. Right. I was dead after You're done. That. Like, You're done. Okay. Bad yeah. Mike, 4883 on the Twitters. 
I'm all over the tweeters talking about Raw, SmackDown. Uh, when I do live tweet Lucha Underground, go to Ad Mayhem Show. Look for the hashtag MM because go. I have a feeling Lucha going to get crazy, y'all. Mm-hmm. At Sorgatron on Twitter, producer Missy rocking it all night long. And remind me, we ought to talk about events. Uh, you guys can tune in on the IndieWrestling.us Facebook page. We'll be talking with the Latin Assassin. On uh, Thursday at Hello, 1 p.m. Assassin, man. Yeah, he's, they're going to be having wrestling right up. Scary wrestling with Tolan FX up there. And we're going to be talking about that in his career as well. And uh, we're going to be talking with Ring of Honor star Shane Taylor on Sunday at 5 p.m. Also on IndieWrestling.us Facebook page. Uh, he will be actually at the Renegade Wrestling Alliance Saturday in West Newton. Uh, RWA, I, I believe, is the place where he uh, uh, became the monster um fully and uh re- wreaked havoc on that place for about a year and it's um, i'm excited to see him come back and see what that's going to be he's going to be in a main event match with uh, uh daniel eads a guy that's been down to the uh, performance center a bit and is up uh, been very very impressive there uh as champion at uh, rwa so go check it out more information of that or rwa live.com don't yes. forget about our friends joining forces for downtown our friends i mentioned it here a couple of times uh rise wrestling with a y and uh scarehouse are joining for a big wrestling event as part of fright up nights downtown in pittsburgh and market square uh that will be on saturday the 27th i believe it's going to be 5 p.m till uh 10 uh there's going to be uh some some wrestling throughout the night on and off i think is the plan officially uh, so go check that out. And they're, they are going to have a great night market and everything. There's a zombie bar with a scare house going on down there. Come down, hang out with us. We'll be filming the event uh, with, for IndieWrestling.us. But also just I, I think there's going to be a lot of hanging out, too, with us. And they're doing they're going to do something really cool and really different with the wrestlers. Also, keep an eye on the scare house social media because I think there's going to be more from that. And there will be more videos coming up from the WrestleScare. Hashtag WrestleScare on the Twitter if you want to see everything that happened, all the all the images and background about that and the videos coming up. And like I said, at least two of them are up as of this recording. And like I said, I haven't even looked at it. I got the email today. I got the in scarehouse reaction videos of the guys and girls. Guys, thank you so much. It's been a great night of mayhem. We'll see you t- see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want. Take it back. Wait for the perfect time to attack. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.